What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. We had a little brief hiatus last week. It was Chosuk in Korea. A Korean holiday, but here we are with week number four. We've got an insane lineup this week. Basically like a dream lineup here, Shun. <laughs> yeah, like uh, we got Sulky back in the rotation. I'm happy about that. Queen in action alongside him and Stork, Bisu and Mini all in one big A team. Really happy to see the Proto squad coming out strong. And finally Sharp Light Speed, a very potent Terran lineup to match. Yeah, these, these lineups are looking insane. I don't know if we're going to see Stork pop off again, but we're starting here with the Zerg versus Terran. Speed versus Queen is a nice match to get us warmed up. Um, I was just talking to you before we started the show that uh, if we wanted the absolute best lineup, we could swap out a few players. Like, it's unfortunate we don't see Queen or Hero here instead of Queen. And, you know, maybe we could have seen Barracks or something like that in the Terran lineup. Maybe swapping out speed, but yeah. that Protoss lineup is absolute A tier, S class. Yeah, especially after Stork's performance last week, like it's it's looking pretty monstrous. I've been looking forward to seeing some good things out of these players for sure. And Monty Hall, very interesting map to kick things off with. I'm curious how speed will choose to navigate this against Queen. Will he go for some, you know, fast cheesy play here, or will he try and like you know just tech it out? Yeah, both players just going to try and hop over. Oh, Queen messed it up twice. Ooh. That's a little bit oh. surprising. He does get it over on the third try. We turn around and yeah. bite the minerals here. No, he's going to go right to grabbing this hatchery. Took a little bit longer than expected, so he has the money to throw that down, and he will immediately. Usually you, after hopping over, will turn around and grab minerals so that you can yeah. uh, open that up a little bit faster. But he's going to hop a second drone over now. Sending that for a scout. Speed is building this barracks out on the map, so he might actually be able to find this and deny that. That would be massive, Shun, if he finds this. No, okay, okay, we've actually got it just about done here. I don't think he'll yeah. be able to stop it from building. Yeah, it's too slow of a drone scout to actually deny this, but it's nice that he scouts it at least. The only downside is that now there will be a, a trajectory of attack onto this natural expansion since speed has chosen correctly. But he's going for a gas follow-up, so he wants to throw down a factory right after this barracks, and the drone might be able to interfere with how fast he'll be able to get this factory online now. Well, where are we going to throw down the factory? Will we throw it down here in the middle? of the map maybe he can drop it uh, inside that middle pathway and then hop it over the wall five health left on this scv making a run for it oh man he gets it nice job just barely able to catch that before uh, the marine can protect it and there's the factory i guess he's gonna float it over Shun. Yeah, I mean, that is a, a, a definitely a viable option for him here. He's going to get this factory down nonetheless, but it's a little bit delayed as a result. And the drone getting the kill is a pretty big deal here for Queen. Uh, every advantage is uh, definitely going to be uh, seen as uh, something fortuitous for him because Terran can get uh, one over on Zerg early on this map. Uh, can be a little bit hard to get the ball rolling for Zerg, but so far so good. And intercepting this Marine of the Zerglings is going to be a big boon. Yeah, he's going to pick this off, but he hasn't started a sunken colony yet. And that's really what he needs to stop this first vulture. The Marines being hidden around the top side of the map as well. He's just going to float that barracks back home, knowing that the Lings can't run through into his main base. And, okay, he sees the factory trying to float over it. That's actually really nice. important. He can block that. He can stay underneath it and prevent it from coming over. But... Speed's actually going to land. He's going to build a Vulture and try to hop it over with an SCV. It's pretty tough to do on those mineral patches uh, specifically, but he's going to give it a try here. Coming in with the two Marines, those are just going to be sacrificial, pushing away the drones for just a moment. Speed is having a bit of a hard time here. I think Queen is handling this very, very well. 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for the harassment to to to, to do much damage here because this 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 SCV can mess up on getting this um, vulture over, and the lings will be able to come over here and be uh, very annoying in intercepting this vulture as it tries to slide over the minerals. So, it needs to time it perfectly getting this vulture over because if he doesn't slide it perfectly, the lings will just pounce on it and get it pinned in right away. So, not really finding anything for his early game harassment is speed, but he is taking very quickly into two port wraith behind this. So maybe. Maybe he can catch an Overlord or two, put Queen in a bit of a supply block and try and get some kind of air superiority after the fact, but I'm not feeling it right now. I feel like Queen's in a little bit of a good state, and uh, he's not getting this Vulture over, so, so far, so good for Queen. Well, while this was distracting, he actually floated the factory over the wall, and he managed to make one Vulture. Ooh. Queen didn't put down a Sunken Colony here, being a little bit greedy. Uh, yeah. th this is surprising. This is kind of shocking. He burrows! Oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 that was so sick. That was so sick. God, Queen. That was amazing. The yeah, burrow was there beautiful right surround. before. Right before the vulture gets in. Uh, second vulture makes its way up here. You still need the sunken colony, even though you've cut that burrow. It's not going to allow the, the drone to get out here. Oh, the burrow on the drone is super sick as well. Two health on that left. But this is starting to... The pressure is starting to mount here. Finally, some of these uh, mutas pop out. You can use the burrow to keep most of the drones alive at least. Queen walking a fine line here, but... I mean, this is some really high-level execution. Oh, absolutely. There's only a small window for Terran to come in here and start to punish the Zerg, and that window's closing rapidly, so the fact that he was able to weather the storm with some tactical use of that bar is uh, going to really pay off in dividends now, and it, Speed's going to have to wait for Cloak, really, to be able to do anything. He's pick off a few overlords here and there. We'll temporarily supply bot Queen. He's trying to isolate these wraiths, though, trying to get on the attack vector to not allow them to retreat back to home. It's going to be a little bit longer before Cloak's going to be finished, so there is a little bit window here to punish these wraiths. They're made out of absolute paper as well. Finally, Cloak finishes, and Queen's going to be in hot retreat, so maybe can get some compensation now with these wraiths chase microing down the rest of these mutants. Ooh, that was looking like a queen victory for a moment, but as he chases down these mutas and the cloak comes online, that was quite a bit of damage for speed. He really reduced the count of mutas, and he got, gets another overlord as well. The distraction yeah. coming into the natural, causing queen to lose concentration there for a moment, and he had the opportunity to snipe down some more wraiths, but he was pulled back a little bit too far. Now the wraith number is getting really high. Speed is one of the absolute best wraith micro players in the game. He even pulls out the wraiths that have low energy. Sends in the ones that have that high energy to push back with the cloak. These mutas very, very well played here so far by Speed. I think he's pulled himself back into this game, but he doesn't have a natural yet. Is just going to start that command center now, continuing to build wraiths here, but adding on barracks to supplement this army. Yeah, wraiths, they're very flimsy units, but if you have good micro, you can get so much advantage with the 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 fact that you've got slightly more range of your Gemini missiles. You can really abuse the, the Muta user if you know what you're doing. It's just so hard to, you know, out-micro someone of Queen's caliber, but so far Speed's done a pretty good job of doing that. I just don't think he's found the kind of damage he was looking for in this game. There was a few, like, a lot of cuts that Queen has made with not making a sunken early and what have you, and the fact that he's been able to walk this tightrope without being punished too much is, is, is kind of remarkable. So Spee's, I think, he's expanding now. He's going to be looking pretty strong in the future, but the, the, the windows like has closed on him, I think, to do much damage to Queen. And he will be able to get this third base up reasonably unchallenged now, I feel. Yeah, that third base is on the way. One vulture uh, harassing a bit, and you're right. It is very hard to out-micro Queen. We saw that earlier when the uh, Wraiths didn't quite have the uh, cloak ability. He was trying to, you know, jump back and forth and, and cause the Wraith or the, the Mutas not to shoot, and it really seemed like Queen was completely on top of it. He just kept on microing those wraiths, or kept on microing those mutas and just putting out damage on the wraiths until that cloak came online. He's likewise here, probably not going to allow the wraiths to just outrange him easily. He's going to dive in now with all of these uh, overlords, trying to send in the Scourge to 
bait out some of these attacks and force the wraiths back for a moment there we go he's got it he's got the range oh doesn't get the moving shot though and allows speed to just get out of range once again yeah. This is a really difficult balance. He's got to get right on top of these wraiths and keep the overlords moving forward. As you get the moving shot going, I think if uh, Queen runs out of gas here, if he runs out of mutas, uh, all of these overlords are going to go down and things are quickly going to swing back onto Queen's side of the map. Yeah, I think he's at risk of overextending here. He's just on the edge of overextending. He's barely got enough scourge to zone out the 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 wraiths here. But if if the if the skirmishes don't go his way much longer, like very easily speak and gain the upper hand, so Queen's gonna just like consolidate his forces a little bit here and, and not not go in just yet because uh, he at the moment things are looking pretty good for Queen. The speed's not yet able to uh, you know get his bio switch underway. He's he's still just trying to stabilize and he's had to remake a lot of turrets. So Queen's actually winning the economic game getting his third gas online now has waited for a few more forces can come back in here and start to disrupt the infrastructure of speed once again there's only like eight wraiths at the moment so the, the power scales are actually going more and more into queen's favor even though a few additional wraiths are being squeezed out he is getting enough dps onto these wraiths to keep them into a slightly controllable uh, fleet size I, I feel like Queen is winning this game, but he is getting supply blocks a little bit here and there, so he's not able to like put the, the, the gas all the way down at the moment. But with this third gas coming online, I have to feel like it won't be a matter of time before he's going to overrun speed here. You can see a very big, a glaring hole in the game for speed right now. It's the fact that he has to mine out these minerals on the right-hand side before he can take this base. And yeah. here's Queen sitting over top of this CC, hitting it now, bringing it down below half HP and diving on the wraiths whenever he has a chance. Uh, killing off those SCVs over and over again is just preventing Speed from ever taking that base. Ooh, sniping a couple of overlords here. If Speed gets every overlord and cloaks, he can actually run down a lot of these mutas. It's going to be hard to run away from those. Oh, here comes the big fight. He's just diving on top. Is there are, are there enough uh, mutas here? That number is really getting low. God, I'm speed is so good with these rays, Shun. <laughs> yeah, he really is. I mean, you did want to be to go for this kind of strategy. It's very hard to make these strategies work at the pro level, so you really do have to be a micro god to pull them off. Uh, he's doing a very good job of it. He's actually whittling down these mutas pretty cost efficiently, but like you said, the main issue is he's not going to be able to get this expansion underway, even though he is technically winning the micro battle with Queen. The, the issue is is that he's kind of been like put into check by these mutas, and he can't really like move his uh, units around in such a way that he can gain access to this natural expansion so even though he's holding on for now and repairing these wraiths he's not really doing much but consolidating the game state he's already managed to muster and queen has got this third gas churning away that's an extra three mutas a minute he's able to squeeze out so eventually the power scales will be once more much more favoring queen uh, it looks like he's going for a gambit here it looks like he wants to see if he can try and get into the main base and kill some drones but he's yes, he going to be intercepted by queen he will be able to cloak and survive for a little bit but once the overlords catch up he could intercept these but it looks like there's just enough power balance to of wraiths that he will be able to like survive and go around more or less unchecked in this game but he's not expanding and he's not doing any damage to queen so this is only a matter of time before things get out of hand taking a quick opportunity here while the mutas are missing to try and snap up these uh, resources and open up this pathway here on the right hand side but Queen is back and harassing those SCVs once again. Speed, he needs that second base so badly. You just can't fight one base versus three. And Queen is just about to clean this game up. He's just about to finish this off. Speed with just four Marines here. His rates nowhere in sight. They're actually going to go across the map and try to deal as much damage as they can. Here comes some lurkers, but no... Oh god, it's still the problem here of the, the burrow. Yeah. Yeah, you just can't do anything. You can't kill all the drones here. You just go underground, and there's no scans or anything like that. Buying enough time for these mutas to come back home, and as soon as these wraiths get caught, it should be game over. There's nothing else on the map for speed. He's going to use this opportunity to try to get that natural online. He's splitting up all the wraiths everywhere, but at least these three are going to end up going down. Okay, at least these two are going to end up going down. Pretty nice split there from speed. Sending most of these back home, but was that worth it? 
it? Did he get enough damage? Uh, I don't think so. If he had his expansion up and running, I would say maybe that was like not too bad. But the fact that he's only just now starting to come out here and there's already a lurker that's going to be really annoying to get past. He hasn't got a vessel on the way anytime soon. So we're going to rely purely on one comsat, wraiths and bio units alone. And Queen's going to be as annoying as possible with uh, forcing the utilization of those limited resources and will eventually drain him dry if given the opportunity. It's getting a little tough here for speed. I mean, he's falling further and further behind in that supply. Already a 10 supply advantage and the Muta Ball is looking thick. We've got one Wraith in this stack that isn't cloaked and that means the Glaives can bounce. Oh, he's going to lose all the Marines. The Scourge are connecting as well. Trying to snipe those down as much as he can, but there's the Overlords revealing these wraiths, and GG is called a great game from Queen here on a very difficult map. Speed brought a great strategy, but Queen managed to handle it with those with that burrow really utilizing that spell fantastically well. It gets the clapper from KZM. Good way to start here. Monty Hall, always a fun experience. Shun. Bisu going to be sent out next. Minstrel is our map, and this is the map that I've been wondering the most about, having the most trouble with on ladder as well. I mean, Monty Hall and this map are enough craziness for me, honestly. Uh, I like the, the map choice, I like the map pool in general, but... These two maps are giving me a lot of trouble. Yeah, I think this map in particular, a lot of people are struggling with, and understandably so. There's just so many vectors of attack. It's like a galaxy with the spiral arms just outreaching and, you know, kind of give you like five lanes of attack, even without any of the minerals being mined out at some of these weird locations. So really difficult to just get around the map the way you want to and get your units uh, responding and coordinating in any kind of like state of coordination can be pretty challenging to say the least so we have seen some weird upsets on this game where players just get absolutely flattened because they just you know didn't cover one la lane of attack and they just get wiped out can happen to anyone even the pros oh, was hilarious um not a spoiler for SSL, guys, but uh, during one of the most recent casts, ta uh, Tasteless and Artosis were talking about this map, and Artosis said that this was uh, something like a Beyblade. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you hear that, Chun? Yeah, it's an apps yeah. analogy, I would say. It kind of is. Oh, it was hilarious because Tasteless didn't know what a Beyblade was, and he assumed it was a type of blade. <laughs> <laughs> very funny very funny little um interaction there but uh, it definitely does look like a beyblade i don't know what uh, yeah. tasteless's childhood was like where he was at in the 90s Depri to miss a deprived out on that. one that's for sure yeah i mean th 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 this this map will have your head spinning like a beyblade as well that's right you've got the like um kind of crazy center of the map the pretty short rush distance here it's gonna force bisu to throw down a cannon right away with the over pool but doesn't seem like queen's actually committing to going across the map he's more concerned with getting rid of this probe as soon as possible and getting down these three bases now what type of game do you think we're gonna see here from queen because We've seen different approaches from different product or different Zerg players. It doesn't seem yeah. like it's really been figured out this map just yet. Yeah, I would say probably hasn't been figured out. Uh, if he was able to stop this probe coming back up here, I would imagine he would attempt a Hydra Bust because he's lined up for it. But I imagine now he's much less likely to go for that because the probe would obviously just see that and Beast would be able to like you know react reasonably appropriately. So I, I think he'll just see a, a, a layer. But the fact that he got the 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 gas so fast did make me think he was considering the hydra bust option but it's just going to be a three hatch layer yeah, that layer is going to start over at the third base trying to obfuscate slightly the build here but bisu diligently going to be checking all three bases it's a little bit tough to deny the probe uh, with just two lings but uh, the ring around the rosy there bisu was able to get back ahead of this oh wait a second wait what hello? what just happened hello <laughs> how did okay. that happen I 
Rarely ever see on this map, maybe? it. I don't know exactly what happened there, but it's almost, it's super rare to see even two lings trap yeah. a probe, but one ling trapping a probe? That is crazy to me. That is one of the slipperiest yeah. units in the game. It's so hard to catch. And somehow, I don't even know if that was uh, on purpose, but Queen managed to catch that up against the wall. Some of these walls are a little bit funny, the way that the the pathing works on them. Like, it's almost like square. And if they're right in the corner of the, right. of the you, you can't even see it, the, the actual grid of where it's, where you're able to walk. But if you catch it right in the corner, sometimes you can trap things uh, that you wouldn't yeah. otherwise be able to trap. And also, you might be able to hide a zealot in a corner uh, where, you know, the surround is not as good. But there, Bisu gets completely surrounded and taken down. The Spire is on the way here, and Queen is in full control after killing off that first zealot. And having, you know... Oh, he's going to catch a second wow. zealot, too! This is he's huge. really got Bisu mapped out in this game. This is actually kind of insane. Like, he's really got Bisu's phone number in this game. Like, really. Yeah. Like, this is like styling on some amateur on the ladder levels of I've got your number. He's wearing, like, 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 um, I remember, um, Tasteless said something funny in a StarCraft 2 cast once. See, like, I, I feel like, uh, Queen is going to be wearing Bisu like a shoe in a minute. Yeah, it's just tying up the laces now. Looping the bunny ears around. And, uh,. Bisu kind of helpless here to prevent what Queen is trying to do or really uh, figure him out or deal any damage on the map. He's already sent out two zealots. They've both been completely unsuccessful. Not even, I think he managed to kill one Ling. Am I right about that? But he's done so. nothing else. And we've already got Scourge out. Uh, this Overlord should go down, but maybe at the cost of a Corsair. Let's see if he gets one of these. Ah, he will get it. Ooh. Oh. Trading the Corsair for an Overlord is never a good trade for the Protoss player. It will supply block Queen for a moment, but that was absolutely worth it. Yeah, 100%. Like, uh, making the Protoss have to spend additional gas they would otherwise not want to, and they want to they bank up and, you know, get four oh, Templars out straight away. Oh, he's going to get... He might get this one as well. This is a great interception. Mm, oh. so, hard, so hard to catch a Corsair like that uh, with no vision on it. The, the Scourge just have such bad eyesight. Yeah, it's terrible. Tiny. It's really bad. I mean, you can still technically scout with them and what have you. They have some value, but yeah, like, your reaction time has to be so on point to even have a chance at pulling that off. And if the Protoss player is even remotely paying attention, it will never happen. Yeah, they have to kind of blindly or just mindlessly wander into the Scourge and have them connect because they just will always be able to see the Scourge before the Scourge see them. We've got a few mutas out here on the map. It's a great choice from Queen, especially considering we picked off one uh, early Corsair. This is going to force even more of a reaction from Bisu. It's going to force extra cannons. It's going to force way more Corsairs. And he doesn't even have to commit to this. He just uses this to clean up the five zealot timing. And right. now he can drone endlessly without any care in the world. He can get up to six hatch. He can get Hydras rolling. This one zealot in the main. Dude, we haven't. We've lost an overlord and one ling so far. Yeah, and it's Beast crazy. Has lost a ton of zealots, one corsair, and he is just light years behind at this point. Yeah, he has no scouting information, so this could be full committal ogazerg for all he knows. So he's gonna have to just like tuck his tail and like try and hope for the best here. And and these, if, if any of these course, he gets another connection with Scourge here. If, if any of these corsairs get caught, and that could very, that could happen very soon. He's gonna do. An Ogozerg dive. Dive into these cannons. The second cannon's only just now warping in. Scourge just waiting around, um, trying to zone out these Corsairs. Gets one of them. Gonna get a few additional ones as well. Down to just four Corsairs and one cannon's dead. He barely hasn't got enough mutas to fight this, though. You need about, like, eight, eight, eight or so mutas to easily kill these four Corsairs, and he just doesn't have it, so we'll, we'll tuck tail and run. Archon has been forced to be made, though, inversely, so costing a lot of investment from Bisu just to hang on. Meanwhile, building a lot of drones back at home, so there's not really that much of a commitment here from Queen, and he's just boosting up his own economy and infrastructure back at home meanwhile. 
Yeah, it's gonna rocket up to about 45 drones before taking a third and starting that hydralist production. He's got a great sim city here with two sunken colonies. Hydras are starting to pop. Corsairs are or scourge are available to deal with those corsairs. Lots of scourge, in fact, and these midas are still being a threat, still being annoying here for bisu to deal <laughs> to deal with and he has to go, come across the map he has to do something right now so he can at least see what queen is up to he needs to get over here and see whether hydras are being produced or we're gonna have you know part two of the ogres are come through and it's just gonna be hydras now so many hydras in production as you can see with all of these eggs Plus one is done as well, and lurkers are already on the field. Queen is just, he's hitting every beat. Oh, but this one lurker. Okay, okay, nice pick up there. Good. I think that was the very first real damage that we've seen out of Bisu um, that wasn't completely traded back by Queen. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, though, how much damage has been done to Bisu in this game. And also kind of funny that these scourges are chilling out by this uh, Dark Templar that's completely cloaked. I don't think he has any idea that Dark Templar's there, though. That's going to be making its way around the map uh, soon and try and maybe sneak past the defenses of Queen, but I don't see anything like that transpiring. Maybe denying the fourth base going up would be ideal, but it's nowhere in, in position to do that, so the fourth base is going to probably come unchecked here in the bottom left corner of the map. And yeah, and he also in invested in the um, air carapace as well, did Queen, so he has some longevity and the air superiority as well, so Bisu can't really do anything but sit back and macro and try and get his own third online here, and that's going to be okay for Queen, he's already firing in all cylinders and going into his tech. I think Queen might have been trying to throw down a, a Queen's Nest over here in the natural and the drone didn't make. So that might, make, be, no, might no. be a little bit slow uh, in his transition. He, he probably wanted to get into Hive a little bit sooner, but he's getting triple upgrade right now. He's got that fourth base started. Things are rolling along nicely now. And we're going to see Queen get to a really, really scary version of himself. Um, yeah. yeah, we've seen this this queen many, many times before, but there haven't been any like massive advantages that have been taken by him so far. It's just the death by a thousand cuts yeah. has been sort of just progressing along here where Beezus has been taking little bits of damage, little bits of damage, and Queen's been inching further and further ahead, and it's all going to accumulate into one massive wave of army that Bisu is probably not going to have. Yeah, there it is. See Queen's, Queen's Nest place down there? I was completely right. That uh, drone was sent to build the Queen's Nest and just sat there idle for a long time. Queen probably uh, a little bit pissed off about that. He wanted to have a really nice, crisp uh, hive timing. It's going to be a little bit later now because of that, but he is going to have so many units hitting the field here at that, just that uh, Defiler's Mound and, of course, the uh, Crackling upgrade going to be a little bit later than anticipated. Yeah, it just means he'll have to, you know, stay on battles uh, just a little bit longer and wait for that Defiler tech to finally kick online, but... Doesn't really matter. He's going to have so many forces to utilize that staying on Battle Zerg an extra minute isn't going to be too much of an ask. He needs to be careful not to use um, units um, too cost inefficiently here. Because that's why he's being so wise with these Hydras, just backing them out after being a little bit annoying. And he will just make a massive army. He's actually even on supply with BC right now, 143. It's kind of crazy to think about already this this dominant in a ZVP before the late games even really become underway. Inversely, Bisu does have four bases pretty much unchallenged here, so he will have a reasonable economy to try and make something happen here. I just... It, it can be very difficult on this map to actually find a lot of damage to the Zerg if you're already on the back foot. He has got a shuttle moving into the northwest main base now. Maybe something can be done with this. Yeah, it's going to sneak by here. But there's one Overlord that's going to end up spotting. Uh, we'll not be able to get those DTs in undetected. And so the drones will be pulled. Corsair's coming in here and starting to pick off a few extra Overlords. Yeah, he's going to get like four or five extra Overlords. Pretty nice. Does lose one Corsair for that. But he's working on this Spire and it's getting quite low. Are we going to be able to bring an Overlord in here in time? Oh, he saves it. 
Nicely done. And actually, shouldn't I will um I will contradict you here and say that it's actually a little or it, this map right here. Minstrel mm. is a pretty decent map for a comeback um, for Protoss. Oh god, he's completely forgotten about these Corsairs. Wow. Just lets them fly in and get killed. Oh man, Bisu, I'm trying to look for a comeback potential, but you can't be throwing away your Corsairs like that. It's really uncharacteristic <laughs> of him. Some uh, Zealots being dropped here into the main. And yeah, what I was trying to say... Oh god, he's gonna hit the Spire. There we go. Okay, nice. that's something. But on this map, it is very difficult to move your army around as the Zerg player. Yeah. And as the ma as more and more bases get taken, it's going to get harder and harder for Queen to respond to the armies moving around for Bisu. And Bisu's going to hit from the north. Uh, he can easily rotate, though, and go and hit another base. He's going to cast a couple of storms, pick off some of these lurkers, uh, take some good trades here, and maybe even pick off this base. And uh, Queen actually wow. needs to stay one base ahead and we've already got five bases for Bisu so this is a big yeah. problem right now for Queen oh absolutely the fact that he's uh, like forcing inefficient trades and going to be delaying expansions and being a little bit annoying here is is a big boon for Bisu because he it, it, like the best defense is offense for him right now so sometimes it can be if he's on the back foot completely Queen can just kind of like f style on him a little bit but the fact that Bisu is kind of keeping the action on Queen's side of the map is is going to pay its dividends for him. I'm mean, still a little bit concerned for Bisu because he's gonna he's forced to make some really big trades right here right now. He needs to do some absolute fantastic storms and just start shredding through the absolute meat grinder of an army that Queen has been macroing up. And it is a pretty tight corridor here for Bisu to come in and exploit. So it's probably the best time for him to do it. All these units are so clumped up, and he has some more High Templars coming from this southeastern flank as well to keep the Sionic rampage going. Bisu looks like he's doing it right now. If he gets just a few inches closer he can take out this Nidus canal and start to cripple the production of the Zerg oh my god I think Bisu just did it oh that wow. is insane oh this is actually kind of cathartic for me should I played this map so much <laughs> and I've had so many difficulties dealing with the Protoss army just pushing into my natural yeah. and uh, there's so many different angles that they can come from different approaches that they can take it's very easy to take a fourth base here as Protoss as well and Bisu's done that. He's pushed in. He's dealt a ton of damage. Killed off all the rallied units from Queen. Queen is going to rally forth and uh, eventually push back this army. But that was a really great trade there for Bisu. And he's even going to try and take a, a, a six base. He's on five bases already. He's going to take base number six over I, here. I, I, I if he takes, he if he <laughs> tries to take, If he actually gets a hold of that base, I don't know if we can see a win for Zerg because he's just going to have like almost half the map. Yeah, no, I, I doubt he'll be able to take that base just yet, though. I mean, Queen does have, still have a pretty sizable force uh, remaining. If there was a, a few more units at disposal for Bisu, I imagine he would have kept the gas uh, all the way down there. But since he hasn't got quite enough infantry force, he can't take advantage of the fact that, you know, Luck is just morphing in at once. If you do have enough forces as pros, you can keep the pressure on. And as they try and morph Lurkers and reconsolidate, you go in again for round two, right as, before the Lurkers start hatching. But instead, he's going to rotate all the way down to the south and see if he can penetrate down here. There's already pretty good luck a minefield of additional forces being brought in with a few sunkens already established and Lings are doing a reasonable job of soaking up but there's just a few too many Archons and Zealots just rampaging through here and with enough Dragoons in reserve and some Sionic Storms we'll be able to break through these lurkers in the back as well so it looks like Bisu is going to be killing this base at 6 o'clock saying and yeah like you say it looks like uh, a bit of a comeback here for the Protoss. Wow, um, yeah, I guess you could just do that. I mean, this, this, this is a little bit crazy. Um, I thought that that was a mistake, actually, sending the Zealots in and just letting them get minced by those lurkers, but it turned into a pretty okay trade. I guess Bisu able to crush through there with just a few good storms, and a Queen is harassing this base over here, but he is on uh, one less base than what Bisu has at this point. And he's not going to be able to shut down the mining here completely. Bisu is ahead by every metric at this point. We don't yep. have Hive. Or we have Hive, but it's just, it's a little bit late. 
Um, maybe that was even more of a factor than I was expecting. I think so. That he didn't have the, the defiler when he wanted to have it. We're now 18 minutes in. I still haven't seen a defiler. That's probably due to the fact that that Queen's Nest didn't make. And how insane is it, really, Shun, that you can play such a beautiful game here as, as Queen and be as far ahead as he was, and one building doesn't make, and... You're end up losing. <laughs> this is this is pretty crazy. I think uh, Terran players would be like preaching to the choir, but it happens all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can at least stop this nexus over here. That's something, I guess. But the loss of the base down at bottom center, I think that's spelling the doom here for Queen, and that's a lot of Archons moving forward. Bisu has yeah. the Giga army here, and it's going to be so hard to engage with Lings. He needs an insane number of Hydras, and there's just always Storms, plus these Reavers now that are going to come in. I'm going to start to hit that Sunken Calling, pick that off, and take control over these three hatches, including the Hive as well. This is an even more important base than it usually would be. Lings are coming from all sides. Defilers are finally coming in to the mix, but they're just being sent in to their death, it seems. They will be picked off. There it is. GG is called Bisu GG. takes this game. A surprising upset or a surprising reversal there in that set. Uh, shaking his yeah, head, I'm wild. doing the same right now. I, yeah, honestly, like, yeah, that game just got away from Queen. And we've seen this happen on this map so many times. And especially Bisu is always the guy that finds a way of running it down to that natural expansion. It doesn't matter what lane. Sometimes it's down the middle. Sometimes it's from the side. Always seems to find that one chink in the armor and it can just get Queen before he can get off the ground here. I've seen Queen lose quite a few games that he should have won i know exactly the face that he has on right now <laughs> that face where he's he's leaned back in his chair you know he kind of licks his lips and he's like oh, god damn it Not again <laughs> oh man what a shame there yeah. for the zergs but Bisu played an excellent game of comeback, or a, a game from behind, and Minstrel is just such a monster. I think we need even more practice, we need more, uh, or different strategies from the Zerg. Maybe, maybe we need to take the middle or something like that. What is, what is the actual... <laughs> Don't know about that. What is what is the, the, the <laughs> solution here? Uh, don't let the Protoss get to your natural expansion, I guess. Similar to how in versus uh, Terran as uh, you, you don't want to let the Defiler get to your natural expansion or it spells disaster. And similar here, once you let the Protoss get into position where they're already in your tight corridor and they're on top of your production, you're forced to trade. It's not going to be a good day for you, unfortunately. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's jump into our next game. Bisu versus either Light. Or sharp, that's coming up next. Deja Vu, our next map, Bisu versus Sharp. Should be an excellent match. I'm very excited to see Sharp's uh, form here in KCM going into the next rounds of SSL. Uh, versus Bisu, I mean, Bisu's PVT has come a very long way. He's improved so much in this matchup, and he seems to be firing on all cylinders, at least in the late game. Seemed like his early game was a little bit shaky, though. Yeah, a little bit flimsy on the early game. But it has been the one thing holding him back for so long. He's always been the PVZ bon joueur. So if he can figure this match up out, he's going to be an absolute force to be reckoned with. Uh, I'm curious to see what he's going to bring to the table on, on this map here. Um, there is the middle only here. Sometimes you'll see Terran players take this middle only as their fourth base or something. Because there is a long distance to get your fourth base up and running on this game. There's no real good choices as well in terms of what base is easier to defend. So sometimes you'll see, like on Retro, the fourth base being taken as the middle. And we might see a little bit of extra minerals churn out from that being taken. But I'm curious to see uh, the expansion paths of both players in this game and if we'll see like a, a big strong macro game or if we'll see some you know timing attack kind of things coming out of both players and sharp is usually the guy to go for those crisper faster timings and trying to use his vultures so what do you think we're going to see here soon 
Oh, we're gonna see some vulture abuse. That is for sure. <laughs> Here comes that yeah, factory. And two, two, two. Yeah, we're gonna get a very quick vulture out. Uh, Beast is gonna expect this though. He's gone for a pretty conservative build. He's not even going to scout with a probe. Just gonna scout with that first dragoon. Gonna skip the zealot completely. Knowing that that's probably just going to get denied by the early vulture. And we are cross map here, so Sharp is going to scout this last. He's end scouting. He's got a bottom left. He's going to go top right now. He'll find his opponent last, and there will be two dragoons probably out by the time that he ends up getting scouted. And he should have the tools necessary to deal with all of what Sharp, you know, the, aggress the aggression uh, that he can bring with these vultures. But that's never really stopped Sharp from getting damaged before. No. And Beast is going to cut probes and throw out a very fast Nexus at 20 here and then eventually get the range upgrade. So pretty crisp timing of a Nexus here from him. I don't think we're going to see anything crazy at this game, at least in the early stages, because of the cross-map situation. Um, but Bisu hasn't gone for anything greedy here. I, I was curious if he was going to go for a 12 Nexus, and it looks like both players are playing very standard against each other, so a lot of respect, but unfortunately not going to be able to catch this probe. It was a nice idea from Sharp here to try and intercept this probe, but he's unfortunately not going to be able to get the successful interception on that, but eventually the Vulture does come in and clean that up, so I guess he has pretty much effectively denied any vision here from Bisu, so Bisu really doesn't know what um, Sharp's up to at the moment. Yeah, Bisu doesn't know where Sharp is located. I, I guess he can figure out from where those Marines were headed that he's probably down in the bottom right. Sharp baited this Dragoon down to the bottom left, and now he's sitting here on high ground with three Marines and a Vulture. You can beat a Dragoon with this number of units, and he's actually going to put a bunch of damage before the Dragoon can do anything. And he's not going to pick it off, but he does a little bit of hull damage. Second Dragoon is going to be sent out to uh, try and help this out. Definitely two Dragoons can't be handled here by Sharp, but he managed to deal that damage, keep all of these Marines alive, and he doesn't have to build a bunker here. That is yeah, a really big deal. That's the main thing. The main takeaway here is that he's done enough that he doesn't have to build a bunker. And for Terrence, that is a big deal. That's two SCVs worth right there. So now he can min-max his build even more now. And he'll be in just an even more comfortable position going forward into the early mid phase. So yeah, any kind of security as Terran in the early game just allows you to min-max so much more. Ooh, and of course, Sharp is going to find a route that Bisu has not quite he covered. Does. Oh, he's not going to dive in here, it seems. He's just finished off mines, and he's looking to uh, make sure that there's no sneaky nexus coming down. He wants to get the timing on that. Bisu here just pumping out more and more Dragoons, and Sharp going to come across the map. I'm a little bit worried if he wants to try and push in right now, because... We're going to have observers, and we've got these two gateways pumping away for quite some time. He's only revealed two goons, but he's got way more. And if Sharp comes in here and loses the tank, uh, he loses his advantage. He's at a uh, supply advantage right now. Oh, God. Ooh, this is he thinks it's dropped. Yeah, it's dropped. He thinks it's dropped. He's sending the dragoons into the main, and he's going to hit the front. I mean, he's still got the dragoons and the observer, so... As soon as he sees this, he's going to bring everything to the front, and he should be able to crush what he sees, so I guess Sharp not even going to pull the trigger, go to the, to the front here. He's just going to kind of hang back. Really weird positioning from Sharp, actually, with the tank over on the left side. Yeah. Um, I guess he was thinking about you know, clear, or going into the natural and, and trying to deal some damage, but he thought better of it. What is this? What is going on here? What is this tank well, I, army doing? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm really curious why it's lingering here. I thought maybe he was coming over to punish a fast third Nexus from Bisu, but I don't know why it's still here. Like, this doesn't make sense right now. Maybe he wants to counterattack if, if Bisu tries to push, but that's so precarious. I think he's worried about retreating these units and them getting caught, but now he's picking the most worst time possible to run them back. It's going to be completely intercepted. Bisu's going to more or less kill this tank for free now. 
now, but it does open up the vultures to go for an attempted run by. Beast is not quite perfectly blocking it, and he doesn't quite get the block off in time, so a little bit of a mistake here from Bisu, but it doesn't matter too much. There's enough Dragoons in reserve to stop most of the, the deaths of the probes, so probably will only lose like half a dozen or so probes in total, so it's not the absolute worst case scenario here. So all things considered, this is like a bit of a blunder from Sharp. Now Bisu's in a much more commanding position. That was very strange. I was really confused about why he stayed for so long, um, and even why that came across the map in the first place. One single tank yeah. with three marines is not going to beat a two gateway dragoon production. Um, it can be a little bit of a distraction, and that's what he tried to make happen. So I, I guess I understand the thought process, but as long as Bisu keeps a couple of dragoons in the wall and had he just placed the one Dragoon uh, right in the wall there and made it impossible for the Vultures to run by, he, he actually would have lost nothing. Yeah. So, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm a bit confused some, about Sharp's play. Some, yeah. I, sometimes I think um, advanced Protoss players will deliberately not block to, to bait you into doing the run by and then close off the gap to try and get a better trade so you don't just like run away and like only take a few shots on your Vultures. They, wanna, they want you to commit. It's like in Zerg versus Protoss. You want the zealots to commit to diving into the expansion so that you can then like kill off the zealots so they can't actually escape right sometimes you want to like bait them into committing so we see a little bit of that occasionally but it's like a bit of a lag issue here so we have to go to intermission while we figure that out yeah. sharp one of the best players at getting vultures into your natural and uh, I, I i feel you i understand what you're saying about uh, Protoss players kind of baiting those vultures to come in, but don't you think that's a risky game when you're playing against Sharp? That's yeah. like the one guy you don't want to uh, try to play that game with. It's a dangerous game, amigo. <laughs> I can see you playing that against any other Terran player, but Sharp is just <laughs> so scary with his vultures, and it would be a shame to lose uh, against him knowing that he is that type of player <laughs> and still allowing vultures yeah. to slip in uh just keep everything locked down and make sure that you don't lose a bunch of probes here i, I think that's the best course of action but now that beast has got this little advantage he's actually going to go into arbiter which is not typical uh for mm. protoss players and um i, I wonder well, certainly if you don't open dt yeah, if, yeah, if, yeah. You, if you don't open yeah, if you if you go for like a dt play on two bases to put on some pressure you you'll see the arbiter play because you've already got the templar tech so it makes mm -hmm. sense but if you haven't done that it is a little bit peculiar you don't see it as often so maybe he just feels that he's safe enough that he can pretty much do whatever he wants and he's gonna get good value out of it but uh yeah not the, the choice i thought he would go for here yeah, this map has a very long distance between the natural and the third. He actually went for DT. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. He killed the, the turret here. Um, this makes more sense then. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice pick up there. Gonna go for the main. Uh, we've got Goliaths, we've got some turrets and stuff like that, so he will be able to push everything or push this back. But um, I just wanted to mention that on this map, the distance between the natural and the third is so great. Oh, yeah. It's very, very hard uh, to just defend three bases, especially from behind as a Terran player. You've already lost a tank, you've right. lost a bunch of vultures, you haven't really done much damage. Just double robo play is so strong uh, at busting into positions like this. I'm really surprised that we don't see Bisu going for that, but let's see what he can do here with the Arbiters. Yeah, it, 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 I know it doesn't look like it's a long distance to the third base, guys, but trust me, for a Terran player, that's a, a, a light year of a distance. It's just so much ground to cover, and if you haven't already got an advantage, you, you're basically thinned out too much, and you're always at risk of being bulldogged over. And he hasn't even got the greatest of turret coverage in this natural expansion, so this DT actually can't be shot as well if he stays right here on this hex. Ah, but he's going to lose the, the shuttle here. That's unfortunate. Uh, not really getting yeah. the damage he was looking for. I thought we might have uh, a Templar in there as well, but he's actually spending most of his gas on upgrades and Arbiters right now, so he's just going to forego Templar and Storm for now as he gets these cloak units out. Um, 
Pretty good setup here from Sharp. I think he's going to be able to hold three bases, no problem. I don't think Beast is going to be able to bust in there, but maybe we can yeah. see a really good recall come through somewhere. Where where do we send the recall here? Because on this map with three bases, the natural and the third actually cover your main base really, really well. It's pretty tough to get in there. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's not going to be setting up for any recalls anytime soon. I think he might just be, you know, being a bit of a stasis man for now and just want to try and lock the Terran out from being able to push and eventually we'll see the recall tech. I don't think he'll recall early. He might surprise me though. He might... Oh, actually, maybe he is going for the recall first. I thought he'd go stasis into recall, but he might just go straight into recall here. Still needs about he could 50 even recall. seconds. He could even recall that pack of Zealots onto tanks. He doesn't actually have to recall onto the bases. He could recall the Zealots onto the tanks. Uh, co my commenters in my... Uh on my YouTube videos would love that. Yeah, they would. That all the time. Recall. Why don't they recall onto the tanks? Shouldn't? Come on. Recall onto the tanks. <laughs> we saw it on Citadel a few times from yeah. Bisu as well. Yeah, we've seen it on... We've seen it in a few different games. It's not the worst thing in the world, but... Not the uh, usual. Yeah, not, not usually done. Uh, because it is so much stronger to recall into a base and, and just deny a base. Um, also, usually that's where the vessels are, sitting over top of the tanks, and they're usually able to drop EMP on those uh, before they can get right in. Like, it's hard enough to get a, uh, a stasis off on a bunch of tanks. Yeah. Um, not to mention a... Oh, oh, he is going to recall here. Recall. There it is. Ah. Recall onto the third. A lot of zealots here, just gonna annihilate these tanks, and he's gonna dive in, see if he can uh, pick off a bunch more of these. He's actually gonna force the lift. SCVs are bailing out of this position, but uh, quite a few tanks are gonna come up here to, to assist. I guess yeah. he's stopping the mining for a little bit, killing off quite a few uh, tanks and SCVs, but I don't think this is game-ending damage. 75 supply advantage, though. Can he actually dive on top of this and deal some damage? That was a great mine, by the way, softening up a lot of these vultures. Yeah. Or a lot of these zealots, excuse me. The vultures will clear everything out afterwards. Well, I mean, he didn't kill the command center, but this is so much indirect damage. Like, it's going to be such a long time before Sharp can even think about coming out onto the map and maybe punishing Bisu. So Bisu's pretty much just going to rock it up into five base. And, I mean, three base versus four base is not too bad in PvT, but three base versus versus five base, you're in trouble. That was actually one of the better examples that I've seen of recalling on top of the army actually working yep. out well. It wasn't like a huge group of tanks, but he managed to clear up everything pretty nicely. And now he's getting a few more tanks. There's no scan. Okay, finally he does scan. Uh, just a few seconds of, uh, you know, failing to scan and reveal those units can actually cost you dearly in a game like this. But Sharp will get the scan off. He will be able to reland his command center and get this third base online. But Bisu's already got the base in the top right. He's got double Stargate as well. I mean, he's getting himself into a very good position. Can Sharp actually win from here? Can he come back? I mean, I have to. I feel like this is Bisu's oh game to gosh. lose. He's just going to recall again on top of these units. Uh, yeah, I'm not too surprised at the moment. And he's going to get the kill on this command center as well. I would say this is about all she wrote for Sharp. If, if Bisu makes some colossal errors and Sharp plays like a god, obviously anything can happen in a game of Stark. A jet engine could fall on Sharp's house as well and get Donnie Darkoed. I mean, that is possible. You know, the, 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 the internet cable could be cut by the Russians in World War Three starts, but other than that, I feel like Bisu's going to win this game. Yeah, Bisu is light years ahead at this point. Uh, even throwing down the stasis, I mean, he's getting so much value out of this. The EMP should be done now, but the damage is, is far and away uh, in the Bisu's favor. He's just done so much here to interrupt the mining and kill off, killing off that command center is usually like the death blow for Terrans. He will be able to maybe mount a counter attack, but it's going to be weak, flimsy uh, you know, nerf, you know, nerf sword here. Whereas Bisu's got basically uh, a nuclear bomb or an AK-47 here to fight off what 
Uh, Sharp is bringing, what is this, five tanks, plus there's three Arbiters floating over and just hitting these? Oh my god, he's just yeah. gonna start killing tanks with Arbiters right now, this is hilarious. We've got no anti-air, so many units, there's the final stasis. <laughs> he's, he stasis half the tanks. Oh god, yeah. Sharp's gotta this get is out. Like a, this is like a LARPer showing up to a fight with his foam sword, but realizing it's like, you know, some medieval reenactment guys in full plate armor with medieval weapons just smashing each other, and he's just not equipped anymore in this game to handle the kind of power that Bisu can put out there. With five bases, even with three, it's a struggle for Terran. He's only mining on two, and the main base will be mined out imminently as well. It's, it's gonna be all she wrote here for Sharp, unfortunately. I, I imagine he's somewhat processing the loss right now there's the gg i imagined he was going to be tapping out soon just processing the game a little bit might want to go over the replay and see exactly where it all went wrong there but yeah unfortunately it looks like uh bisu just too hot to handle right now yeah sharp he got a little fancy in the early game didn't he with that tank yeah. push i thought yeah, he was doing so well you know not having to build a bunker dealing that damage to the early dragoon I, I, just, I really feel like he got a little bit too big for his own britches, like he just tried to uh, pull one over on Bisu, and Bisu was not cutting any corners, he was just building dragoons and getting ready, and now Sharp is out, we've only got one Terran player left, and we haven't even no. seen Stork yet, Bisu carrying the Protoss lineup right now. So, Bisu, really proving positive the, the fact that, you know, you don't have to be super fancy with your early game control. You don't have to be incredibly good uh, when it comes to, you know, that micro in, in order to win games here, even at the highest level. Just good sense of build orders, timings, and a late game army control can take you a very long way and he's already proven that versus both sharp and queen yeah. can you do it against action who is pretty much a late game monster yeah action is uh he's an aggressive zerg but he's an aggressive macro zerg so he's always wanting to go into late game he just likes to apply pressure while doing so i'm curious to see how bisu lines up with that and yeah, I, and Bisu seems so much more confident in his PVT as of late. I think he's starting to figure it out. Like, the more I see of him, the more I feel like, okay, maybe this guy, I don't, I don't necessarily feel like he's going to just, like, win the SSL or anything, but I don't know. Like, he's starting to become more of a contender now. Yeah, he's always, he's always had a lot of respect. Yeah. Uh, he's always been... You know, uh, a well-respected legend, but lately, in the past several years, hasn't been able to reach those highest echelons. PVT was holding him back, but it really doesn't seem to be as much of a factor anymore. Here, Action throws down a 11 hatch over at the third base, and that is actually going to be pretty tough. Um, to defend here. He's even kind of blocking the spawning pool, forcing it into a, kind of an awkward place, and slowing it down any amount is going to be a problem because the Zealot is already on the way. Now, Radeon has pretty long rush distances. It's a little bit tough to get a Zealot into your opponent's main, but this is the uh, absolute best case scenario right now for Bisu's yeah. uh, initial attack, and he's going to throw down his Nexus. Uh, while this is going on if action doesn't hold this perfectly he's going to you know lose a drone with this probe already in the main kind of harassing these uh these drones a little bit oh he just barely Ooh. doesn't block that that would have been huge actually if he could have blocked that yeah. natural but uh, action does get it down and the zealot's gonna go to work here in the main yeah pr pretty good job from action to still still get things up and running might get a good drill on this zealot he's being very cautious to try and not lose any drones and he's done a good job of that so far but now things are starting to go a little bit wrong one of the drones getting hunted down but now the links are out it's a little bit painful to lose a single drone. When you go for that 11 hatch, you, you really don't want to uh, be punished like that, or it kind of negates the value of going for the 11 hatch in the first place. So I would say Bisu's job is done. Uh, just killing that one drone there and forcing a little bit lost mining kind of has uh, 
compensated for allowing action to get away with the 11 hatch here. Now just needs to weather the storm of these lings putting pressure on the front. There's not a lot of zealots, just two with a third coming out soon and no cannon in sight that's on the way. So the lings could put a pressure on this wall in and potentially kill the gateway even if there's enough lings made. Well, if he doesn't get any damage here, that's a lot of lings that he made this early on and after losing a drone as well actions opener is looking a little bit flimsy he's just trying to get that probe in just to get some scouting information he wants to see if any more lings are being produced but it's just drones here from action i think this early game has gone very well and and we saw what Bisu can do with an early game deficit. What can he do with an early game lead? Well, I thought with the Overlord getting full scouting information, he was going to consider a, a bit of a Ling Flood there and put some pressure onto Bisu uh, with a bit of a counter. But I think he just d doesn't want to take any chances in this game and just see if he can macro his way out of it. But it's going to be a tall order. I mean, Bisu is a bit of a PVC specialist, so to say the least. I don't know how he's going to come back from this time. It is a small deficit, but it, a small deficit in Zerg versus Protoss is, is a big deal because you kind of forced to play the same way anyway. You can't really like do any cheap tricks to catch up again. You kind of just have to go with your game plan and hope for the best and with a deficit. And that, it's, it's, it's hard to beat someone of Bisu's caliber when you're playing on the back foot like that. Um, he's going to have to hope that he can catch these Zealots out on the map or something with these Zerglings. And it looks like Bisu is aware of that possibility so he's being a little bit hesitant to come out especially if only a single Kallen uh, online right now can be a little bit risky to, to run out with all your zealots with just a single cannon back because the ring, ling run by punish can be so devastating oh bisu he faked uh, did a little pump fake with these zealots coming out and then running back into his natural and force actually even more lings from action <laughs> yeah. he has like more than 12 he's got more than a full group of lings i think at this point and Bisu, he didn't move out. It looked a little scary. I thought he might be uh, considering that move out. But he actually turns around and heads back once again. This is prime position for Bisu. He is on a roll right now. And I mean, we have a chance to all kill the, the Zerg squad. I can't believe how many all kills we're getting this season. It's actually getting a little bit insane. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild, yeah, to say the least. I mean, you never know what's going to happen week to week. Like, one week, Stork smashing everyone, and now we see Bisu smashing everyone. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, who knows? The, this, the week's, this week's not over yet, and like, Soul Key could reverse all kill everyone soon. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen, say? And that's what's so exciting about KCM. And what, it's an absolute blast to cast and bring you these games. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, like, there's there's a chance here for action still. He's, he, oh, yeah. he's, he, he's a strong enough player that he can navigate weird positions into favorable ones it's just going to be a tall order here for sure i mean these lings are still useful they're going to be able to body block for the hydras that are popping out soon but uh you know action he didn't go for like a really quick uh hydra build or anything like that he still went for the spire he's trying to play completely normal and just react perfectly He's building a, a sunken colony here in the natural. These salads are actually going to deal a huge amount of damage. My god. Just targeting down the evolution chamber is a great idea. We do have a few mutas popping out here slowly, but I've been in this position. Shin, you've been in this position before. It doesn't yep. feel very good when you've only got two mutas attacking. It feels like the zealots just last forever. No plus one here is the, the one thing that's not going that great for uh, Bisu. And drones are coming off the line. They're going to fight as well. I don't. I haven't seen any drones fall so far. All the lings get traded out. That was actually yeah. not bad for action. Honestly, yeah. Probably one of the better things that action could have hoped for. Because now he's reset the zealot count. So now now there's not going to be as much of a map presence uh, afforded to Bisu. So action can kind of just like wipe the sweat from his brow, take a deep sigh of relief and be like, okay, now I've got a mid game to play for. Now, now I'm not going to get killed anytime soon. I can put a little bit of pressure on my mutas, keep the Protoss player in the dark and actually try and make a game of it now. Yeah, he can't, he, you know, he could do some sort of 
you know, Mutalisk all in into the main, so Bisu has to be aware of that, but he could also just drone super, super hard right here. Yeah. Uh, he's going to pop out a few Hydras, it looks like, just to make sure that the Corsairs don't uh, run rampant and kill every single Overlord. But I think as soon as he gets that that few Hydras that he needs to actually protect these, he's going to drone like a madman and... He will get up to that 45 count. He might even go for a fourth base here pretty soon. He's remade that evolution chamber. He might have been denied the upgrade. He's waiting for the courses to dive and, you know, go a little bit too deep. Maybe dive into the main or something. And yeah. do a little backstab here with the mutas. It's a nice setup, but Bisu's not going to commit. And that's also fine for action. He could just hang back with these. Uh, wait for an opportunity. And keep droning at the same time. Yeah, usually you'll see on average a Zerg making anywhere from 24 to 36 lava worth of units until they finally can start power droning again. So it's right around the time you'll have like a control group and a half worth of Hydras so you don't just straight up die to the Zealots and then you can go into another round of drones or what have you. And uh, yeah, it seems like action has navig uh, navigated his way into a pr pretty pretty good position now. The fourth base is online, the supplies look about where they should be, relatively speaking, and uh, he has enough Hydras to have the critical mass to fight back the Zealots. I think uh, Action's done a great job of turning this game around so far. The fourth base is going to come online and the drone count is getting to a reasonable number. We can start to really pump off of four hatcheries. Are we going to go into Lurker right away? I imagine we'll have to. Action here is going to have quite a large area to defend. That fourth base is a little bit exposed. A little bit harder to hold on to that base than, for example, like a, the, the 6 or 12 o'clock with a very small ramp or even the bottom left-hand corner base. Might be a little harder to or a little easier to hold on to, but he's actually he's opted for this more wide open base and maybe that means he wants to get more aggressive with his lurkers. Maybe he wants to go across the map and, uh, you know, set up here in front of Bisu's base and, and contain him on two or three bases instead. Yeah, it, it seems like he's considering a three base contest. I, I doubt he thinks he can get a two base contain successfully, but I imagine he's considering a three base contain. I think that's more likely, yeah. I haven't seen any lurkers getting made right now, but we're pretty low on that gas. So maybe he's got a few on the way. Um, spreading out overlords now, spreading out his vision everywhere, looking for snipes. Let's take quite a bit of damage from that uh, storm, but it's not going to matter too much. You can rotate out some uh, healthier hydralis and keep those ones in reserve for now um, they can kind of regain that hp over time and Bisu is starting to move forward he's got a pretty decent uh, supply advantage and he's not going to allow action to take a good position out in front of his uh, natural or the, his third base here. He's just going to move out on the map and force action to come to him as he pushes over here towards his fourth. This is this is this is a dangerous situation right now. Really dangerous for action. Yeah. Yeah, high volatile situation and great game sense from Bisu as well, like uh, faking the attack and then moving to intercept the units that were sent to flank. So Bisu already no has got Action's number and now pushing into this tight bridge will be very difficult for Action to come and dislodge these units. Bisu can do a lot of damage to Action in a very short amount of time and these Hydras coming in to reinforce from the northeast flank are not going to be in a very good position. They're just going to get stormed to absolute death. So many Hydras going down to just two or three well-placed Sonic Storms and in the southern threshold as well. Well, there's a lot of hydras in the south and the storms are starting to dry up, but one more critical storm is going to help support that and the damage has already been done to the infrastructure of action. I feel like action's going to be able to clean this up, but there's more rallied units coming across the map. Mews are moving into intercept. Some of these rallied units, they can take out these high templars on the uh, pathing over across the map here. Maybe he can soften up this army enough in its util utility that the, he'll weather the storm here, uh, pun intended, and we'll be able to, in a pretty good position still, all things considered after all is said and done. So didn't lose any of the hatcheries, didn't lose too many drones. Uh, the supplies look pretty okay. I would say this overall is slightly maybe Bisu favored in the sense that he, he might be able to secure this third base without any counterattack from Baxter. But Action actually looks like he smells uh, blood in the water and actually wants to try and put some pressure. He actually wants to challenge Bisu now. And I don't think actually maybe Bisu has enough to fight this. I feel actually, actually maybe, maybe has done enough damage to Bisu here. 
I don't know about that. I feel like Action, kind of desperate right now, needs to dive in and do something. He's going to kill a couple of the cannons, but the storms are on the way. Um, just, just waiting for a little bit of energy here. He does have that energy now, and this desperate counterattack from Action is going to be pushed back. Uh, maybe he could have dove on the third base instead and tried to snipe Templar as they came out to reinforce. He gets two more. All right, he's doing something here. He's pushing things back. The Corsairs are going across the map. He gets another Templar. He gets another cannon. There's only one remaining. And the Lurker here could be pushed forward. He's still rallying to the front. Um, a bunch more Hydras coming over this direction. Another Overload's going to go down, though. He is now... Uh, getting supply blocked at 71 of 71. The momentum is starting to run a little bit dry here for action. He's trying to push up onto this wall. He has quite a few Hydras back at home. Bisu, he's just barely hanging on right now. There's no Templar here. Hydras are still coming to the front. Is he actually going to break through, Shun? I can't believe I never this is actually my boy working. Sam. Yeah, I, d I, I didn't doubt him for a second. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, like, my spidey senses were tingling as well. I was starting to smell blood in the water as well, and it, there just wasn't enough Templars coming out, and they were low on energy, and there's just enough critical mass of Hydras to put the punish on, and it, it, it looks like it looks like, it looks like like Bisu's cleaning this up. I feel like um, if Action had sent all of his rallied um, Hydras, he would have probably won the game by now, but he had, like, six or seven or so Hydras that weren't doing anything for so long. If they had been brought to the front as well, I feel like he would have overrun Bisu. I feel like he just figured out that there was a third base there. Action sends a lurker over and figures or finds out that he is in a much worse position than maybe he uh, was thinking. Uh, there's no drones at the third gen. Yeah. It's I bad. mean, it was looking like maybe Action was going to be able to win this game, but I mean, with everything that's happened with Bisu holding on in that natural, the follow-up attack is just going to be easier and easier to hold. Okay, there's no... There's, there's actually no Templar here at all, and the Lurkers are just going to run in on top of everything. DTs, though, in the mix, and do we have Overlords here? The DTs are going to do so much damage. They're just cutting through these Lurkers so quickly. I think this wow. is the end. Action gets shoved back. He loses every Lurker. GG. Oh, what a crazy oh, game there. Crazy. Oh, man. He almost had it, man. It's so close to busting through. Just not barely, though. Oh, that is uh, going to be a rough watch going back over that replay for action. I think those Hydras, like you were saying, being left yeah. at over at the third base. Um, might have made might have been the difference maker but unfortunately sure. they just weren't in that fight and uh, that was a do or die moment he couldn't break through that natural if he killed the nexus and you know set up down at the bottom of the ramp it would have been completely different there but yeah he just didn't have the rallies in time. Bisu manages to hold on. I mean, it, it, that was that was a very clutch moment, but even more important was the attack from Bisu over to the third. That was insanely well done. Really got in there and made the trade from Hero really, really difficult. Uh, we've all been in that position where the Protoss army gets on top of one of your bases and then you have to attack into it. And the storms are just so, so deadly. Very, very tough position there from action, but a great game. Only one Zerg player left now. Dude. Crazy. But it is so key. It is Soul Key, yes. <laughs> but first, we have to watch Light versus Bisu. It's coming up next. Dominator is our next map with Bisu spawning down here in the bottom left, light in the center right, low ground main base, high ground natural. We're going to see a gasless fast expand here from light, I think it's one of the stronger builds on this map. But we'll see, you know, we've seen all kinds of different theories for Dominator and... It seems like Terran players can make most builds work on well, this map at this point. My theory is that the pizza guy that cut this pizza calls himself the Dominator. <laughs> he dominates pizza. That's my theory, so. It's kind of a power move, right? Like cutting the pizza all funky like this. Just see if yeah. they'll complain, you know? Like, go ahead. Go ahead, complain. 
<laughs> you want to mess with the people that prepare your food, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, you get the get the next one with a big loogie in the middle of it. <laughs> extra cheese man extra cheese yeah okay he's gonna go for a gas build all right i was expecting yeah, uh, guess. the uh, high ground to be taken here but he's just gonna play it out a little bit more normally and he's just not doing anything like forward gates or you know, get, get him getting really uh, aggressive just yet he might still build the zealot send it across and try to pressure light but he doesn't have to. He can just play his normal game. He's already yeah. shown uh, fantastic, easy, really, really strong skill with uh, just a uh, normal opener. And Arbiter is actually great on this map, by the way. Yeah. Well, the the main issue with this map is not only do you have a low ground main base, um, which has obvious issues with it, but you have this tight high ground ring, so you can't see any air units coming into your base unless you've got something floating there. So turrets and, and such are a lot less effective when you're in a low ground compound like this. So, yeah, things like arbiters and shuttles, way more effective. And on this map especially, I think you can get some pretty good value out of those units. So it's possible we'll see a similar build out of Bisu here. Trying to do as much damage with this probe as possible. Bisu backs out before losing that. But any damage that he did could lead to some kills here as the Zealot arrives. He's going to be targeting those damaged SCVs. They do not repair, they do not heal. So he could get some kills before this vulture comes out. The well, uh, factory just about done. It is 11 gas, so the factory a tiny bit quicker than usual, which will allow him to, you know, take this expansion a little bit safer. If this was a bit of a slower gas timing, the vulture would be a lot longer behind so has to respect the faster vulture timing when he sees the factory that far done he knows that the vulture won't be far behind so won't do critical damage here to light but it was a little bit annoying almost got that scv yeah would have been uh, very nice for bisu but as it stands nothing gained nothing lost bisu gets the scout he sees what's coming he's gonna keep that dragoon back at home ready for this vulture which is trying to take a pathway that is unlikely to have any units in it unlikely to get scouted here but he's not going to be able to make it into the natural he sees the dragoon and backs away before even taking a single phase disruptor phase disruptor shot so keeping that nice and healthy he's going to have opportunities to dive in once again or just throw down mines in places that bisu is going to be annoyed by yeah, unless you got an SCV out on the map to repair that vulture, all damage will be permanent. So it's nice to be on top of the ball so much so that you don't take any shots for free when you can help it. Obviously, shaving off the shields of the Dragoon is way less efficient because it will just recharge. But as we can see here, it's almost inevitable that your, your vulture will take damage. So you want to use those hit points as a valuable resource to keep that vulture alive as long as possible so that it can eventually lay mines uh, at the third base and scout around the map a little bit for you. So you usually see a lot of plays in trying to kill this first vulture before the mine upgrade is ready. Yeah, if you don't get those mines out on the map, you're at a pretty serious disadvantage and you just won't yeah. be able to see when that third base comes down. And there are things that Protoss can do to really put on pressure to you when you just don't have the mines ready. Um, a lot of resources has been uh, you know, put into getting these mines out quickly. He got the very early factory. He got the upgrade right away. And that's not only minerals and gas, but it's also build time. We don't have tanks out yep. yet. The uh, factory has been taken up by these uh, building out these vultures. And now he's going to throw down the mine. So he gets the mine on the third base. He's done a really good job of avoiding the dragon so far. So really getting the value out of those units. Yeah. And in an ideal world, the Terran player, generally speaking, wants to be able to produce vultures for as long as possible. Vultures are the attacking units and tanks are the more defensive units. So if you can get away with it, you want to be on vulture production for as long as possible. That's why you always see Terran players go for these early 
really gambits with the mines and then light is known for do, uh, pulling this up with a vulture drop uh, players on his team are all, always having their dragoons in position in their main base just because of how often he goes with his vulture drop that we're seeing now two dragoons are in position bisu's well aware of that but yeah i mean i, I don't think these vultures are going to get too much done here bisu's response is just pretty stellar this is a, almost the perfect response to have uh, a vulture drop uh, he will get a couple of these probes by being annoying and rotating around but losing two or three probes to catch all those vultures is pretty good trade here and the fact that he's denying any additional attempts from the vultures sneaking into the natural and what have you to prevent any additional damage this is looking pretty good for bisu really standard stuff here from light trying to run into the natural uh, with two vultures while the drop's going on but yeah you're totally right everything just being handled perfectly here by bisu not missing a beat and he's going to be able to get into his next tech or try to take his third base at this uh oh mine actually connects that's a little bit unfortunate yeah. imagine this uh, one does too oh okay getting a little lucky Close. there <laughs> that's um just an a click from bisu sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't but this drop is likely to come in once again we still have the dragoons in the main yeah we do and so bisu recognizing the potential for a secondary drop I'm gonna clean that up really easily one probe went down beautifully handled here by bisu yeah yeah, it, Light is just so prone to go for these vulture drops that you're kind of a fool if you don't have any kind of anti-drop set up at that six minute mark. So it's nice to see the Protoss player dotting all of his I's, crossing all of his T's and, and just playing an absolute standard game from start to finish and not cutting any corners. So he's not being as greedy as you can be as Protoss, but it, he's also disrupting anything Light is trying to throw at him right now. So even though he's not being greedy initially, he'll now will be able to find a lot of compensation in thwarting those early assaults and now even though his third base is a bit delayed he'll be in a much better relative position for what uh, light wants to do here abisu has a shuttle ready for any push that could come but light just gonna sit back for now and does he actually did he get a science facility as well or i, I haven't seen it yet usually when you go for the i don't uh, think so drop play it's a little Playing bit easier factory. a little bit easier to get into uh, the, the plus two upgrade get into that science facility um, plus one is not quite done just yet, so maybe he's going to wait uh, until that's a little bit closer to finishing before adding on the science facility. Right now, it's all about factories, trying to get those numbers up, pump out as many units as he can, and probably take this uh, third base relatively soon. There's that command center getting dropped down. And yeah. I mean, it's a very short push distance. Think about the difference Shun, between the push distance to the third base on this map and the push distance to the third base on uh, Deja, Vu. Deja Vu. Oh, yeah, night and day difference. That's for sure. And uh, it makes sense what Light's going for here. A much more mid rangey style, just getting the five factories out, making sure you have a solid enough unit count because your, your Vulture Drop didn't do anything. So mm -hmm. you're on the back foot. So you might as well just make sure you've got enough to take your third base to set yourself up for the mid game game here and he knows that bisu is likely to get you know shells and reavers so having the five factory just to not die is going to be great for him too taking a look at the setup in the main light has mines all around look at that mine on the right hand side that's like yeah. a that's an experiential like a, a mine where you only place that there when you've played thousands of games and you just know <laughs> that you've died to a you know reavers being uh, placed right in that exact spot well if you analyzed your games and just thought to yourself okay could i have won this game had i had a mine here or here and you start to think about those sort of things mm. and eventually you start to calculate okay i need i need this amount of stuff to just not die and you know eventually you, you figure it out but it does take hundreds and thousands of an games of analysis two shuttles coming into the main base now there is some pretty good turret placements here but with the two shuttles coming with speed we'll be able to unload pretty much every single unit and get a lot of damage done in the main base already taking out the tank and one of these turrets that uh, even if this drop doesn't do enough damage it's okay because he's killing off the turrets and opening up the position to be attacked again in the future so a lot of damage is being done both now and maybe to the future uh, as well didn't lose this other turret at least so didn't take too much damage here, but I would say this is going pretty good for Bisu, all things considered. Well, Bisu, I mean, he opened up 
the the turret he killed the turret there so that he could actually retreat with the reaver as well um but light was a little bit too quick with the goliaths getting in there and sniping down that shuttle so didn't go as well for bisu as you might expect pretty much due to the setup here from light just being right on point now dragoons are pushing forward that's a lot of tanks on high ground so unlikely he'll be able to bust through but if he gets some really good zealot bombs on top of this some reavers in the mix as well he could potentially bust in he gets three zealots out of that first shuttle the rest of the zealots are going to be dumped on top of those tanks in the background and this is so many protoss forces he's actually chunking through this army and already a lot of tanks have been lost gonna get this mine Good targeting here by Bisu. Bisu known for his Dragoon control and his ability yeah. to dodge mines and kill mines as they're being thrown down. Light just not able to get good connections with any of this. And the setup was looking pretty strong, but the uh, timing there with the shuttles coming in and just dumping on top of those tanks was a little bit too good. If we'd had four Goliaths, he could have two shot uh, one of those shuttles and made it a lot harder, but with just three Goliaths, he wasn't able to pick those off before everything got uh, unloaded. And man, Bisu takes a great fight there. Yeah, resetting the tank count is huge. I mean, he doesn't have to kill um, Light straight up. Just resetting the tank count is a really big deal. Now he's going to be uh, loading up his expansion with probes and kicking his uh, economy into high gear now. And yeah, just resetting the tank count like kind of just puts Light on the back foot even more and he won't be able to push for some time now. It kind of just gives the ball to Bisu to do whatever he, he wishes with. We finally see that science facility out of Light, but it's pretty late, relatively speaking, so we'll be behind on the upgrade great front as well so not going to be trading too cost efficiently for some time and that might be just enough of an advantage for bisu to thwart any attempts from light to secure a fourth base unchallenged here yeah looking at this game i mean i i like the choice to grab the science facility now i think it's the only choice that makes sense so you're not going to be able to push it's it's kind of like admitting that you're not going to be able to push oh my god God, amazing storm there. Fantastic mind drag as well. He actually stormed before the mine even connected on the, the Templar, which is rarely the yeah. case, but it ends up doing even more damage than if it had just been a storm. That was some incredible SCV kill uh, damage there. And um, what I was trying to say just a moment ago is that you're kind of admitting that uh, you're not going to be able to push you know six fact seven fact whatever it's just not going to end up working and uh we're gonna take this as late as possible we're gonna probably try to get a fourth and go to like plus three wait for a max out before pushing across the map oh my god just as i'm saying that light starts to pull the trigger i am very shocked that he's gonna try and push right now he does get the one well, shuttle though that's pretty big i think i think he distracted bisu in the main base enough with the vultures to be annoying enough to feel like he had a window to try and come out into the center of the board a little bit here I, he needs to be very cautious not okay i like this mining up this southern ridge before going any further this is a good play from him now if he consolidates his forces right here maybe this won't be too bad he's already covered his southern flank with this minefield so this this could work for him he just has to be careful with how he positions his units because bisu could bowl him over at a moment's notice if he's out of position but so far he's entrenched himself nicely this is a very hard position to attack into about a lot of shuttles 40 supply advantage right now for bisu that's a nice mine um he hasn't cleared this out too well and the position from light is is uh, pretty strong right he's in that kind of a uh, gap between yeah. those two ridges, which is hard to push into. Uh, Bisu going to head northward now. Not a lot of these tanks are actually going to be firing during this fight. A lot of them are over here on the left-hand side. And Zealots are going to be jumping on top of those. Actually picking those off in the back line where Vultures are not uh, helping them. But all the Zealots have disappeared here. Light's actually taken an amazing fight. And we're, we're completely even wow. on the supply. This is insane, Shun. What is How happening? Did he this, this is crazy. It's like watching Flash versus Bisu back in the day. It was kind of crazy. Like, even though Bisu wasn't great in PvT, he had exceptional Dragoon Mike and watching him like do the little fancy dra dragoon micro with flash and this is kind of giving me a little bit of reminiscence on those days this is really stellar stuff out of light and he, i think he might have enough gas in the tank to go all the way here if he can just get, knock out this nexus get on top of the rally point bisu might just be dead like bisu's only got a tiny window 
to consolidate his forces here and try and um, announce some kind of um, counterattack, but there might not be enough units coming out of these gateways to do it. Uh, I don't think Light's going to press the issue, though. I think he's just going to chill on this ridge line and wait for more reinforcements while taking his fourth. But Bisu is going to have to scramble enough units to push push out right now because he's not going to. If he doesn't get this expansion up online, Light's going to come a, like 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 be fine in this game. Like, I, I think Bisu's like lost all of his lead now at this point. Oh, absolutely. Bisu was looking fantastic right up until that fight. But Light got the position and Bisu was not ready. I think you were totally right saying that he was distracted with the, the drop going on in the main and he didn't have his army out on the map to challenge that push forward. And Light got to the position, the exact position that he wanted to be in and took the exact fight that he was looking for. Uh, I mean, that couldn't have gone any better for Light if Bisu had just AFK'd and let the army run in. I, I don't think we could have, you know, had a, a better fight there. Uh, just, just insane levels of damage and an insane uh, overall uh, supply swing because remember, 40 supply advantage for Bisu before that fight. Now we're sitting here nearly even. Storm's gonna come down. Uh, on this one tank but that's a lot of zealots and there's just pure vultures sitting here and mincing them as they come forward he does cut off the the top part of this army and pushes it back but i mean beast's army is looking so small he's behind in supply right now yeah, this is actually kind of crazy. I'm actually quite impressed by Light's army control. He was trying to bait Bisu into attacking into that choke and didn't really commit that many forces to the north. So Bisu wasn't really able to exploit anything there. He's kind of denying any options from Bisu. So any questions that Bisu asks of Light, Light's had an answer for. And now Light's wanting to take a fifth base. The shuttle might uh, uh, decide to slow this down, though. I don't think he's going to let that go unchallenged. Uh, it will, will be a little bit annoying here. Maybe get some good SCV kills. Does manage to get the uh, the pull out on there. But pretty good follow-up. Storm's going to be getting some of those kills and morphing an Archon. I don't know, though. Like this game honestly could, could go on for a while. Like It's possible we might have like a 25-30 minute game on our hands. It's possible, but the way Light's playing this, I feel like he's getting closer and closer to a win. Uh, if any of you guys are struggling on this map as a Terran player, look at the position that Light is keeping his tanks. That is exactly the right spot uh, to, to deny big Protoss armies like this. Just deny them any sort of reasonable fight. Oh my god, he's right on top of his own mines here. The dive through with the shuttle doesn't quite get the mine drags that he might have been looking for, but he almost wiped out all the vultures. There's three vultures in this army right now, Jun. Can he get on top of this with his all of his zealots? That's a great storm right there. And the zealots are running forward. Did Light make a big mistake? He was sitting right on top of his mines earlier, and he took so much damage from them. Yeah, this is what I was worried about saying. I feel like light was a little bit spread thinly there. And, and now this six o'clock base isn't going to be underway. So going to be uh, resorted to just a three base economy. Main base already mined up. Bisu's just tapping out. Uh, okay. Wow. Bisu gives up here. A little bit of a surprising result at the end. But I mean, it's frustrating when you're far ahead of your opponent and then they take a position like that on the map and you take such a bad fight. I feel the frustration right now from Bisu, but he carried his race pretty far along in this week of KSM. He did a really good job picking off quite a few of these Terran Zerg players and set himself or his squad up for a great finale. Soul Key versus Light is the game we're going to get next and still Stork and Mini waiting in the background. So let's jump into those next games. Light versus Soul Key, our next match. Shun, I know you want to talk about that last game. What do you think about Bisu leaving early there? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it, it almost seemed like a bit of a rage quit to me, honestly. Like, like the frustrations got to him too much because there was a lot more blood in that game than I think he gave credit for. I mean, um, Light's main and Natural were pretty much mined out and he denied the, the fifth base coming online. So it's only a mineral only and one gas expansion that Light's mining on. And 
Even though you lost the expansion and lights being a bit annoying, you just killed a lot of his tanks. He's not mining a lot of gas. He's mined out on his main and natural. I, I feel like he had a lot more life in that game than he was giving himself credit for. I don't know if he just rage quit or got frustrated or misread the game state, but I feel like that was a little bit of an early GG. Yeah, I feel like maybe we missed something. Maybe something else was happening on the map that we, we didn't get. Uh, the Possibly. We might have missed. I, I don't know. It's uh, hard to judge. I might have to go back though. later. It's hard I might have to, to go back later and look at that game again. Yeah, it's hard to judge for us as the spectators with the view of, uh, you know, the overall supply count. We see how much money is in the bank and everything. Um, plus, we can see both sides, but it's even harder to tell as a player. And when you're only working with half the information, maybe it, yeah. uh, Bisu thought that that six o'clock had been, you know, finished and was going to be mining in just a second, but that was not the case. And potentially early tap out after a really good run there. Now we've got Soul Key spawning here in the bottom left. He is opening with a 12 hatch, pretty standard on kickback to get a little greedy. Yeah. The question really is, is how much more greedier is he going to be? And it looks like the answer is not greedy at all. Just a very fast lair timing going to be coming out from Soul Key most likely nothing crazy like a three hatch before pool or anything like that so might with it, with it being cross spawn though he won't be able to take full advantage of that um it would be nice if it was uh like vertical or horizontal because he could put a lot of pressure on with a two hatch muter timing but with light getting the top right pocket in cross map i, I feel like light's gonna have um oh he's gonna go mech i think maybe as well one more one and he might go fast into valkyries here and with it being cross map that might give him even more of a chance against so, so um Zoki. Yeah, the Terran players have been trying a lot of this stuff versus Soul Key because the standard two racks marine play or uh, stim rush just hasn't really been cutting it lately. And also yeah. Light sees that it's cross map. Maybe that's uh, factoring into his decision to start the factory. Um, but yeah, he is going to be teching a lot faster. And there's also the fact that Sol can't get into this base. He's got the wall, and there's no way to get the Overlord into that main um, before Marines are out. So he's he's not even going to be able to send the Overlord in to spot this. I think this is a great setup for Light to potentially take down uh, the two-time ASL champion, man. Yeah, I mean, it may even be a Vulture drop into Valkyrie, which would be very interesting, because if Soki just makes a single sunken in this choke point and doesn't get link speed, uh, those Vultures potentially could get a lot of damage done if he does decide to go for a Vulture drop star. So he's going to build that sunken colony. This is always um, a little bit like, mysterious to me how Solki was able to with the vision, the very limited amount of vision that he gained uh, with that first drone scout, figure out that there was a vulture coming. Maybe he was already expecting it, but he's got the sunken here. There's no way you're getting by that. Oh, I think he can get by with just two hits. Yeah, he can. It's kind of uh, crazy. I and now, he, he, yeah, he's desperately trying to box in the Vulture, but sometimes if he can't quite get it, it will slide to the left like this. Oh, this is the worst case scenario. This is really annoying to deal with as a Zerg player, but he will catch it eventually. It's just so much lost mining time right before you got some Lings out to deal with it. It's just an absolute nightmare to lose that much mining time early on. Every, like, second those drones aren't mining, so many minerals are going down the drain, and you've lost all your optimized mining path on the drones as well. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nightmare honestly like worst case scenario here for sulky but he's such a champion tier player that these small upsets don't really phase him nearly as much as they would do another zerg player to be fair that we are definitely in agreement soul key such a cool uh, player just absolutely cool as a cucumber yeah. this guy does not get phased by anything you can watch him play in the asl and his face cam during the games he is like a, a stone 
the entire time the game is going on he never reacts he's not like a, a mini or something like that who's shaking his head through the game whenever something goes wrong or you know slumping over in his chair sulky just stone-faced hard as a rock this guy has been through everything and he knows exactly the mentality needed to be a champion and he never lets that mass slip oh absolutely he's got psychopathic levels of uh, stoicism just radiating through his body saying and that's what you kind of need to be able to handle a game of this caliber like, it's one thing having the mechanical skill to compete at the highest level in this game it's another to keep your composure on stage where everything's on the line and he's been able to do it in quite consistent fashion and who knows this might be another season of SSL he led under his belt as well and get another title it's very possible he's probably the favorite to get another title right now that's for sure that's what they should do they should uh with the new ssl you know the asl had trophies the ssl should have belts belts I think that'd be better. belts yeah you know, you I like get it. like a wwe style belt for winning the ssl <laughs> yeah I think that'd be pretty it, <laughs> yeah well we're getting uh you know two two port wraith play here from light and you know we uh had speed try this style and speed is one of those players who's really good with wraith control but i actually thought that light was really one of the best um yeah. he does light, light. a lot more rarely but he is insanely good with this and he's going to be splitting his wraiths hitting different locations and that's that's where things really get crazy and, and light is the best at doing this yeah, Light is the OG at this style of play. Like, there's a few Terrans now that can do this style very effectively, but Light was the OG um, at Wraith Control. He's the one that kind of, like, you know, made it look as crazy as this. So he's like the Bisu of Wraith Control, in a sense. And, uh, yeah, he's kind of, like, having a good showing of that thus far, really putting Soul Key and pushing Soul Key to the limits here and trying to come in at multiple angles um, before we can get the Spore Conley set up to stabilize. And usually Soul Key's the one asking questions of the Terran player at this point, and it, it's not been that way around. Light's been in pretty much strong control of the game, now going to be going around the map, hunting down some of these Zerglings. It is possible that Borrow is on the way, so you want to hunt down these Zerglings before the Borrow upgrade finishes so that he can't just borrow links around the map and scout you so it's good if you can hunt down these links while you've still got time a oh, very fast hive out of soul key he hasn't even put the the third gas down yet has hardly any drones over at that third base but he's already got the hive finished at eight minutes it's pretty fast i mean it's pretty fast that is very quick and so Devour. <laughs> i mean he, he never even looked like he he went hive before he went overlord speed that is really really rare yeah and no, what is the uh, tech i mean i was thinking does he make like one devour oh he's on an actual huh? queen okay we don't, we he's gonna end he's gonna ensnare the, <laughs> yeah but he's gonna ensnare the wraiths and try and get a tempo play with that that's a high risk ultra. play and he's going straight into ultralist cavern okay this is interesting he's basically just gonna do a crazy zerg style with um, an ensnare catch on these wraiths as a bit of a gambit here uh, this could go horribly wrong or amazingly well here for soul key uh, if he's got the execution to pull this off then all the power to him but light's really on top of things if he avoids the ensnare with the race this could go horribly wrong for sulky i feel like we're missing one critical resource here oh, this is a great scout sending the scourge out he sees the marine medic moving across the map and this is the critical missing resource that i was talking about the sunken colony line is typical for a crazy zerg player um, was missing here but you know what maybe with the the queen you know you can cast the ensnare on these wraiths or you can throw it on the marines either one is uh pretty strong there's yeah, a few drones over here good. oh oh he gets oh. it pulls out the irradiated amida insanely fast as well now can he actually uh, utilize this i don't think so but at least it's not a good idea to engage here for a little bit 
Right. Uh, light is probably going to well, wait for a moment, and uh, that's going to buy some time. <laughs> Look at these raves. They're still going to try and micro, even though they're moving at basically half speed. Like They're still going to try and get some snipes here. You have to admire it. Uh, but yeah, basically, you're just trying to delay the attack from Terran, and you do the same against Bio. You just throw a few end snares down to, to, to delay the bust and what have you. Uh, honestly, though, like I'm curious. Is Light going to be able to do enough damage here to actually... Like keep Sulky on the back foot, or is Sulky just gonna make enough ultras that he bowls him over in this game? Because honestly, he's done a great job of mitigating the damage from these wraiths. Yeah, he's picking off a lot of these. There's only six remaining, and two of them are really, really low. Another sunken colony gonna come up, and it seems like Light wants to take another CC here. I mean, he's killing off some drones. Another ensnare does miss. You kind of gotta predict where the uh, wraiths are gonna be and uh, hit it uh, perfectly in order to get those raids, but uh, I mean, it, it's tough. It's really, really tough to land an ensnare, especially under pressure, and uh, the fact that he landed one was pretty impressive. Landing two would have been insane. He kind of misses it, kind of whiffs, but he's almost got the angle here. Ah, oh, not quite able to chase down those raids. I think they're completely out of energy, so if he was able to find those, he would have done a lot of damage. Oh, he loses. Oh, that irradiates. Oh, man, that irradiates. Doing so much damage. Holy, he finally pulls that out. That was like the highest HP Mutalisk in the Clumption. Yeah, that was the, probably, I wonder if he, like some Terran players are so particular, they'll actually like left click on the muters to make sure they don't accidentally irradiate a low HP one. I wonder if Light did that there or if he just got lucky, because sometimes Terran players put in the, the time to actually like quickly click on a, a muter to make sure it's a high HP one. But sometimes you don't have time to do that. So I'm wondering if Light actually got lucky there, or if he was like clever enough to actually uh, figure that out, because a lot of those muters are bruised. Well, he had the, the time, I think, because he was pulling back the race. He had vision of the mutas for a little bit more time than you might usually. Uh, and yeah. so, you know, that could have been a factor. Uh, if that is the case, that is a very clutch play because he killed so much with that one irradiate. Uh, Sulky really doesn't have any air... Uh, dominance anymore even though the wraith play has been shut down so uh, so much there's hardly any wraiths remaining he doesn't even have enough mutas to challenge the wraiths at this point yeah and plus two only just now finished for light but sulky's already been sitting on 4-1 on those ultras so he's ahead of the upgrade curve so he'll never be behind yeah this is rough for light that the ultras will always be trading well from now on and there might even be a window where they've got an upgrade advantage for at least 10 20 seconds as well well, watch the map, guys. We're going to have some more bases thrown down here shortly from Solki. He is uh, on three base right now. Three gas is it's possible to go to Ultra like this, but you need more gases to come online. And even more so on this map because the gases are going to run out sooner. Uh, these yep. gases are very low yield. They don't have a whole lot of resources at each gas. So you have to get more bases online uh, even faster than on a regular map. Uh, and you need at least two more bases just to have three gas once again. <laughs> so it's going to be it's yeah. really tough. He needs more bases really, really soon. One has just been thrown down in the bottom right. But I expect to see many more thrown out on the map. And Light is doing a good job of scouting out everything. These irradiates are insane. They're doing so much damage. Damage and the scourge are going to go down. Things are really going wrong for Solki, even though he has that big uh, upgrade advantage. Yeah, so far so good for Light, has to be said. But um, yeah, I, I have to I just reiterate and uh, um, steel man you a little bit. Those The, the difference of the gas is 3,000 instead of 5,000, so it runs out six and a half minutes quicker with three workers mining, so it's a really big difference. You have to get these extra bases up really quickly. So if Solki can't get this base up in the bottom right, Light might have just won by uh, positional advantage, just denying the fourth gas get on, getting online ever. I mean, Light might have done it. I think this is kind of crazy. Well, Light's going to send everything to the bottom right, and that's going to open up a pathway for Sulky to potentially send another drone out and maybe grab a base here. There's one Wraith, but that's not enough to deny the drone from uh, 
uh, landing this hatchery. And he can even throw up more bases over towards the top, right? Like, just start throwing drones everywhere uh, to hopefully hold yeah. down a base someplace. Uh, we've got two queens out here still. He's going to throw down some uh, parasites, in fact. And parasite works uh, by revealing all of the vision uh, that the science vessel... It really steals the eyes of the science vessel. It's like putting a bug yeah. behind its eyes. And it can now... Uh, now you can see everything that the science vessel sees, but there are so many many science vessels here shouldn't this is really rough that's a great great ensnare though and this surround is so good shouldn't is he doing it soul key just barely i think getting an insane surround here and once this bio ball is dead it opens up the map for many bases to get thrown down yeah, and like I said earlier, like the upgrade advantage is still in Solki's favor. So there'll never be a time where it's like plus three Marines and the Ultralisks don't have five armor. Like that won't happen. They have to have a drop here though at the third base. So this this is denying mining and getting a little bit done here. So it's some pretty good pressure here from Light. I'm not sure this is exactly what he needs to, to come out ahead in this game for sure. But I mean, if Solki gets this fourth gas online, I'm so worried for Light because Light's gases are going to run out very imminently and a terran player that can't uh, keep growing while applying pressure will just wither and die and uh sulky's already got all of his upgrades pretty much online now that we're just seeing now and, and so now finally we see the plus three weapons on these marines and sulky's already sitting on his plus five armor so lights in a little bit of trouble unless he can somehow muster up a crazy amount of bio in a big blob to gun down these ultras it's so hard to control this amount of bio though there's so many hotkeys that need to be utilized well what we can say for sure is light has an insane number of vessels here oh and he's got restore so he can get rid of the nice. uh, parasite that's funny but there it is Ooh, this is big huge huge irradiates on a bunch of these ultras he is gonna cordon off a small group of marines here and actually pick them off but that is so many right it's oh my god dude light has done such a good job of keeping all of these vessels alive this might actually be the key to his victory of this game yeah soki needs plague to win now i think i think soki cannot win without utilizing plague now and that's actually a big of a big issue because it means he has to cut production of ultras to be able to get the plague online and the small window where you stop pumping like critical mass of ultras and you're only just now getting a fourth gas online and now your second and third gas are starting to become depleted there's not enough gas available to Sohi do everything. He's trying to throw all his eggs into the Ultralist basket right now. I don't think he wants to transition into Plague just yet. Where are the Scourge? That's so many vessels. And he's going to throw down some of these. Uh... Oh, that's a great ensnare, by the way. The ensnare on some of these vessels as well. It helps so much in actually cleaning them up. He's killing all the Marines once again. So he will actually kill this force. But Marines making their way into the top left. He's actually got to stop that from happening so he can get this extra gas online like i said he doesn't just need one gas to come online he needs multiple here and a drop over in the third base <laughs> as well light is tearing him apart some uh, mutilists come forward but there's no plague on these vessels so it's not like you can just kill them in one hit he has to actually chase these down and the drop is just dealing so much here so much damage from this drop so many drones going down ah uh, soul key I mean, he's taken some great fights. He's picked off a lot of Marines, but I think he's being pulled apart slowly, but surely Light is yeah. taking advantages in this game. I just don't think he can make them up. Yeah, it's going to be tough for him to recover. I mean, these gases are now depleted, so you're, you're, you're gaining 75 gas a minute maximum from these depleted geysers. It's just not enough to churn out what Sulky needs right now. And he's only got one gas to replace. Like you say, not, he hasn't got the double gas to to replace those two that are now depleted and inversely light's going to be getting this other gas online and he's already got tons of gas in the bank because these vessels have been so cost efficient he hasn't even been needing to make any more so he's just got loads of resources in the bank as well so light is sitting pretty and has such a big bio blob i think queen might be tapping out soon i don't know if he can continue much longer you know this is this is something that i often do with um crazy zerg as well and it's a neglecting scourge neglecting the uh yeah. the killers like here's scourge a wave of scourge coming out now but we needed this when we were cleaning up the bio balls 
We needed the Scourge to come in with the uh, combo of the Ultras to, uh, you know, distract the Marines and then pick off a huge amount of vessels so that we can stop getting irradiated and dematrix to death. And I, I just, I don't think he can put together that same force. I don't think that he has the overall gas income to make that happen. Now he's going to come forward with two Ultras and try to take this fight. Here comes those Scourge. Is cloned a lot of them onto a ton of different vessels, but I feel like this is a little bit too little too late. Yeah. This is the fight that he actually needed a few minutes ago, and Light is just going to uh, continue to drop. He's going to continue to radiate everything, and Sulky just does not have the gas income to deal with it all. Yeah, this light is just running a Terran 101 on Sulky, like growing constantly while applying pressure. Every time Sulky tries to come out onto the map, we see a drop coming in. Beautiful utilization of Defense Matrix as well, just making those trades so inefficient for Sulky. And he's starting to dry up like crazy now. He's tr and uh, these bunkers at the expansions are critical against Crazy Zerg as well. Just needs to sandbag the Ultraling as much as possible. GG finally tapping out the entire Zerg squad's wiped out, saying there's only Stork or Mini waiting. Can Light go? the way and kill all the pros here or do you think he's going to get taken out damn i i don't know what to expect at this point i certainly did not expect sulky to go down uh so quickly it seems yeah. like he had a pretty decent game plan uh, here for kickback but wasn't able to kill those vessels and the value of those units was insane this game i think you'll agree Shun, the wraiths did great but the vessels were really the killer here that Absolutely. shut out soul key from any chance of coming back what a series of games we're having here today guys take a minute out of your day go down to the description hit that first link go give a like to kcm leave him a comment as well as we get into it. potentially the last game of the night, Stork or Mini, who's going to be sent out next year against Light? It's Stork. He's being sent out here to take on Light. Happy to see it, Shun. Wanted to Christmas? see more of Stork. Christmas is early. I'm a happy camper. <laughs> Yeah, there, I mean, there's been a long period of time where Stork was just not an exciting player for me, that I was not looking forward to seeing this guy play. Like, whenever he was in the lineup, I was just kind of imagining he was going to get taken out early, and I was usually right that he would be taken down uh, with kind of a poor performance, but... This is the new Stork, Shun. This is the Stork yeah. that recently all killed here in KSCM and has been dominating in every tournament. I mean, it's a whole new world here with Stork uh, at the level that he's managed to, to make himself. You just can't get rid of this dinosaur, saying. I mean, they tried to take him out with a giant asteroid. They tried to take him out by, like, turning him into oil to power their siege tanks. And, and now he's back with a vengeance. And he's he's, he's hungry. And I, I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling it. I feel like there's something in the cards for this guy in the future. Oh, he's definitely hungry. You can just, you can tell this guy has been putting in the hours, grinding out games, lots of practice, um, maybe with some new practice partners, maybe with some old practice partners. I wonder who's helping him to prepare. But whoever he's got a lot of friends is, amongst I mean, the pros. So oh yeah, for I sure. Think, yeah, yeah. He'd have, he'd have most mostly his pick of who to practice with, I imagine. And if he's performing, people are going to be happy to practice with him. That's the thing. The better he performs, it's going to be even easier for him to practice. Absolutely. And I'm taking a close look at his build. Nothing out of the ordinary here just yet. Dragoon's going to be coming across the map. But the the brilliance of, of Stork's kind of rise here as of late hasn't been like, uh, you know, kind of a shine style where he's suddenly doing very, very well with some you know crazy builds. He's just become massively solid with the most standard stuff that we have right now the yeah. the newest builds the best 
uh, builds in this current meta, he's just become so good at executing them. Um, it's, a, it's a different type of rise that we've seen out of Stork recently. Yeah, he's not doing anything fancy. He, uh, most of the time doing very standard safe builds, just executing them so well and just being an absolute monster recently. We see Light here is trying to skimp out on this bunker, leaving it at 99%. He doesn't want to complete that if he doesn't have to. So he can save like 70 or so minerals here uh, if he realizes that there's no, good, there's no pressure coming his way. He will cancel that refunds those minerals and you can utilize those in uh, throwing down a, an extra factory or a starport a little bit earlier he's going to push out with three marines and a tank maybe try to surprise a dragoon on the high ground or something like that yeah but uh well, uh well maybe he can push any there's only one one uh gateway dragoon coming right now yeah well there is a, there, this is the timing for protoss players to try and take a very greedy nexus so this is a way of punishing that so if you cut units and just have like one gateway worth of production you try and take a five minute third this punishes that and it also allows you to mine up the location securely as well so applying pressure without committing to the attack i don't think light's going to try and do anything here he's just like you know going to make sure he's got all the position in the world to lay down the mines that he wants to lay down and make sure that stork isn't getting away with something too greedy here mm, stork's hiding a probe he was thinking about doing something picking a base or something i'm not sure he's got two dragoons over there on the high ground you're totally right light just gonna push forward here and check for a base lay down a few mines and head back home no no more aggression here he's not going to do anything crazy like what we saw out of sh uh, sharp earlier where he keeps the tanks out on the map he's gonna bring those into the safe protection the safe harbor here of this natural and set himself up to defend against this uh incoming uh, reaver shuttle that we're likely to see out of stork yeah well now that he's uh, isolated uh stork onto a much more mid-range style he knows the possibilities are a little bit more endless obviously if you know your opponent's being greedy you know that he's not invested in that tech early but knowing that he's on two base and made about two gateways worth of unit two gateways worth of units you, you don't really know what exactly he'll go for but he can be pretty certain that it's probably going to be some kind of uh, robo tech into a standard game so trying to apply pressure though with these this three tank move out i do kind of like it he's assuming that stork maybe has cut a little bit of dragoons here if he hasn't made non-stop dragoons he may be a little bit weak to this push but he has got the high ground with enough dragoons here i don't think light's gonna find the damage he was hoping for oh he's gonna lose tanks Ooh. yeah great dive here from stork the vultures were off on the side wow uh, you know below the dragoons there he loses two tanks really fast can he get one more shot he does get it all three tanks go down and this was a perfect hold from stork he's gonna get away with an insanely fast nexus and kills off tanks this is such a good spot here for our protoss he loses the rest of the dragoons and there's still marines here but without any tanks how are you gonna have any staying power against dragoon and uh these uh observers yeah. here he's just got to be careful not to let any vultures into his main and he's doing so yeah he, he will let the nexus get a little bit low here it's going to get his shield shaved off and some hull damage as well but eventually i think he'll have enough dragoons to just come out clean out the mines and deal with this little push here but crazy game sense and the star sense for stork to just identify that the tanks were not well supported and that light was trying to be a little bit cheeky with his vultures on the southern flank and just completely punishes it and just barely as well like if that goes even a little bit differently he's gonna get the nexus okay this is a little bit crazy i i, I thought stork I thought Stork would be able to come in here and save this with the Nexus like barely surviving on like a hundred or two hundred hit points, but no, he actually had just barely enough DPS output to actually kill the Nexus. So this game's actually a lot more different than I thought it was going to be. So Light's actually in a much better position than he probably should be. This this went pretty well for him considering the bit of a blunder there, but getting his tanks caught. Wow. Um. Those Marines adding on that little extra bit of DPS turned out to be insanely impactful. Uh, I think there was a slight mistake here made by Stork. He was trying not to allow the, the Vultures in. And, I mean, he, he also got severely unlucky there, right? He was trying to hit the yeah. mines and missed, like, six shots in a row trying to hit that mine. So, 
it really delayed him quite significantly um but had he just built a building in that wall um so that he only needed one dragoon or maybe he can even I, i'm not sure if you can do this can you do this on this map should build a, an extra put an extra building in the wall to just make it impassable and then just send four dragoons out on the map to to deal with that he needed to he needed to get the dragoons forward a little bit sooner but he was worried about the yeah. um about the vulture run by just throwing down extra buildings might have been worth it might have allowed him to save that nexus but you can see that stork was surprised by the amount of dps put out there as well it it, it would have been a viable option it's just not as min maxi because you're losing minerals on the cancelling of the buildings when you want to cancel them mm -hmm. and also um the micromanagement can like fluster you a little bit so usually players won't go for that option just because it's like they don't want to juggle that because they're not used to doing that so they usually opt not to do that kind of start even though it sometimes can be probably the right call it's just pe people t tend to shy away from that option this is some sort of six factory play from light and he's actually added uh, three he's got three add-ons going as well um there might actually be more than six here is there seven factories in that main base i was kind of looking at it as an odd number yeah yeah seven, seven factory so he's gonna go ahead and do some sort of massive push and stork is upgrading air weapon he's getting ready to switch into carrier here kind of falling back on the old faithful but I, i'm this, not sure that he's going to be ready with carrier by the no. time light's pushing this would have been good if light was playing like five factory into expansion and then going into upgrade terran this will not be good against seven factory that wants to push you this is like the counter to what stork is doing so at the moment he's blind countering stork so yeah this game is going a little bit unfortunate for him unfortunately yeah oh what it is, though. my god oh. those reavers <laughs> just got so much damage oh but the mines behind <gasps> this are insane they actually pushed the dragoons back into the tanks as well uh i thought that was actually gonna go a lot better for stork but as it stands i think that light has a good chance to just push across the map now and yeah. punish absolutely it's not looking too hot for um, Stork right now. I mean, he would need like very high level uh, micro to be able to get out of this situation on uh, without any damage being done to him. There's so many tanks that are getting on top of his rally point right now. And he's got a small contingency of Dragoons um, waiting to intercept some rally units. He's going to try and maybe do a pincer maneuver on that with these Dragoons that are um, on the flank and with the other Dragoons moving into the rally point. But he's not got enough back at home to really deal with these tanks that are just pressuring him. He's, he's dropping some zealots, killing a couple of tanks here and there, trying to kill and cut off all the rally of uh, Light to see if he can eventually clear this up by cutting off all the reinforcements. It's, it's very ambitious move but maybe he can come into the natural with these dragoons and kill these rally units if he gets these two tanks he can stop the mining at this natural at least and this could go a little bit horribly wrong for light if he's not able to do enough damage quickly enough with his army outside the rally point oh my goodness the scouter attack is insane he's killing so many scvs stork he's pulling back oh he's forcing him to turn around that's crazy he knows he's gonna lose so much mining and so many scvs could even Holy start stork. to lose a huge amount of uh, army supply coming out of these factors as well and it looks like he's gonna trap and kill all these tanks but Sork's gonna trade the best that he can by just focusing down the tanks that are low HP he's gonna get so many of these oh one tank in the middle there was actually a good target as well but dude he's done so well with this counter attack and Sork has carriers out is he actually gonna be able to do this oh my god Sam what is going on like, I was thinking earlier like like, it's one thing for Stork to play well from a good position, but if he can win games like this where things haven't gone his way, beautiful snipes with these Reavers, if he can somehow win this game, I'm going to be so impressed saying, holy, is Stork back, guys? This is absolutely madness here. Hasn't really got a lot of forces, but he's he's clearing up as many of these Goliaths as he can so that his carriers can go to work. It doesn't matter if the tanks live now. He just wants to make sure that he can whittle down as many of these Goliaths. And he has killed a few, a fair few of the tanks as well still. This is an absolute madness game and light hasn't expanded he's still committed on to the seven factory two base timing and stork has managed to survive and transition now he will have four carriers coming out soon that could actually start to fight this army this is wild stuff we're seeing here soon the reaver play from stork has been insanely good this game has really kept him alive and 
This shuttle, so low on that HP, is bringing two Reavers around this map. That is wild. They're actually in a, a bit of a rough position right now as they're not available to help him uh, stop this push that's coming in right now. Some more Dragoons do pop out, though, at a very opportune time, and they may be able to hold on against the Vultures and Goliaths that are pushing in right now, but these carriers need to get online. They need to get online now. Um, where are the Reavers as well? Oh, good mind connection there. There's some Reavers coming. Just blocking uh, reinforcements here, but Light's going to go around that and try to reinforce. We need these Reavers to do really, really well against the Goliaths. There's only one tank left. If he can just come in and pick off that tank, he can actually advance with the Reaver, and I think he can finish this off. Yeah, the fourth carry is just now poked. Once those interceptors start to come online, they'll have the teeth they need to really start to chew into this Terran metal. But right now, there's enough Goliaths to start to fight his back. Tyke takes out the shuttle very quickly. Both Reavers pop like a zit. And now it's just a remainder of the Dragoons and carriers. But now that there's four carriers out, they can start to fight this Terran army, there might just barely be enough Goliaths that he can thin out the interceptors before they get too uh, much online, but it doesn't look like that's going to be transpiring. It looks like there's just enough interceptors to overwhelm these Terran forces and start to t get a tempo swing here. I think Stork's just barely done it. Yeah, I think he's done it. He's going to kill the last of the Goliaths. Some Vultures are going to run in, try to kill some probes. Uh, nice mind connection there, but the Dragoons will eventually come down to, to deal with this, and uh, he'll keep the majority of the probes alive, whereas he's done massive damage with that most recent counterattack um, into Light's natural. He killed so many SCVs, there's not a lot of economy behind this, and Light is going to have to turn around, run home with like three tanks. He's making hardly anything right now aside from a couple of Goliaths. He's got seven factories. I can't imagine more than four of those are actually blinking at this point. Yeah, this is kind of wild that we. This is. Uh, and, and Stork is known for going carriers as well, so it's kind of nice to see him winning with the carriers. This is phenomenal stuff. Taps it out. What a monster. Stork, two weeks in a row, has not failed to disappoint. Absolutely stellar stuff and actually winning a game with carriers as well. I, I think that's like uh, almost poetic in of itself. Well, Stork did not disappoint Shun. Oh man, yeah. what an amazing <sighs> final game. Um, I wanted to actually see more from him, but I really can't complain. That final versus light was so, so fantastic. Uh, we're actually getting very close now in the point rankings. Three, four, and five. This is shaping up to be a fantastic season of KCM. Oh, I couldn't have said it better myself, myself saying. I, mean, I think this is the one of the closest races we've had at the week four mark as well. It's not usually this much of a race. It's usually like two are close and one is like almost flatlining. Not this case we've got an absolute crazy back and forth tempo swingy and protoss were on upward trajectory have done really well in the recent weeks but now that's kind of tied everything up in the middle with a nice little bow and stork has just been an absolute god these recent weeks i'm really impressed with him would love to see more and more shame we only saw one game from him but if he's winning those kinds of game states when he's in that much of a dire situation and he's basically being blind countered by light like light it by all stretches of the word should have just crushed him and he somehow manages to turn a weird chaotic counter-attack into a winning move it's just phenomenal almost champion tier stuff like I I'm really curious to see if we're gonna see a stalk of old just return to former glory and really start to shake up the pro scene a bit soon stork coming in at a time when protoss really needed a shake-up they needed an x-factor and they seem to be, you know, struggling in the KSCM and in the SSL as well. But perhaps Stork is the answer that Protoss fans have been waiting yeah. for. We could have a situation here in week five. We could be completely tied up at five points if Terran manages to take a win uh, next yeah. week. But they've been kind of coasting on second place victories so far. Yeah, it'd be pretty wild if Terran win and um, Protoss comes second and Zerg loses and it's 5-5-5. Five, five, five. That'd be so funny. And especially on week five. five yeah. you know, be, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be amazing. Yeah. I'd love to see that. I don't know if we will see that, but yeah, that'd be a great. I'd be really happy with that synchronicity. That would be, that would be pretty cool. Um, a lot of things have to go 
a very specific way for a, an event like that mm. to happen. But I don't know what five 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 means in your culture. I remember in Chinese it means ha ha ha. But um, <laughs> I don't know what it means in my culture, honestly. <laughs> it's it's a little bit、uh, less dramatic than six six six, but. It's back. It's Backstreet Boys. It, 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 it's five five five. You know, that's that's all it is in our culture. Oh, I think I think they said bye bye bye, but、no. it's probably yeah. yeah I, 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 come on, I, I, give me a break. I'm doing my best here. Oh man, that's almost、reach. that's almost as bad as、uh, tasteless not knowing what a Beyblade is. Man, are you really a '90s kid or what? What's going on here? Am I? There, there's some, there's some skinwalkers here. There's some, <laughs> some fake humans walking around. It's like you're not yeah, really thirty years old, are you? <laughs> yeah, my my human modulators look way off right now. I'm not able to sound like an authentic human being. I do apologize, guys. We'll get that polished out so there's no like Zerg creep in, and it just sounds like I'm a normal Terran guy. Yeah, we'll get a, we'll get that newest update, and、um, the the, <laughs> the AI running soon will will sound. I'll get the updated Neuralink. <laughs> <laughs> I need to wait for the next iteration for Neuralink to come out as well. That's what it is. Yeah, we'll we'll get uploaded into the Matrix here in no time flat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go live、yep. in the、uh, the StarCraft universe if we do end up、uh, reaching that future. I'm like a seventy、nice. or eighty years old Neuralink. That's gonna be a good time. Well, yeah, imagine、uh, just playing StarCraft with your brain. Maybe I'll finally I'll finally be able to get S rank if if that's the case. We get Neuralink online, <laughs> get that advantage. I mean, it might take a lot of the stress away, but actually, because of how many actions you have to do with your keyboard to macro, can you play StarCraft with Neuralink, or is it just more of like an FPS shooter kind of game? Advantage because of like being able to just look at people's heads to kill them. I'm wondering. I'm wondering like how much does Neuralink help you play StarCraft? It's a good question. Um. Yeah, I wonder if there's any advantage at all that would be gained from using Neuralink. I mean, it really does seem to be like the pointer, the the clicker accuracy that actually、right. makes the most difference. I. But you'd wonder... still have to use the keyboard in conjunction with the pointer being controlled with your eyes, right? Because you have to macro your keyboard. You can't like look at the build icons in the bottom right to macro. Like that'd be really weird. Yeah, I wonder if you could just use Neuralink for your mouse, and then use your left hand or use both hands for the keyboard.、Yeah. Maybe that would be. That's、OP. actually a good point. Maybe maybe that'd be OP because you could do two-handed macro. Be a Zerg、yeah. player of two-handed macro.、Ooh. There, there you go. <laughs> We figured out, Sam. We figured out. Maybe、uh, you know the the fiftieth anniversary of StarCraft will have a Neuralink、uh, league. Or players can <laughs> two-handed macro. That would be was, next level. I think you would have to. It would be. I think it would be like you'd have to divide it as well. You couldn't have Neuralink players and non-Neuralink players competing. I think you would have to separate the leagues. There might be an interesting future ahead of us. We got like pro-human gamers, which are like just you know straight up born and bred human, and then you got the the transhumanists that have like <laughs> you know merged with AI. Oh no, yeah, a bit of a bit of a movement there. I wonder where that's going to take us. Yeah. That'd be interesting. The the neural linking,、uh, kids, the young kids coming up, it might be、uh, dominating. Back in the... my day, we had to use our hands. <laughs> they might be dominating the professional gaming scene, and they get the neural link implant when they're six years old or something like that. They've had it their whole life. <clears throat> yeah. Us old, us old people with.、Um, <laughs> neural link when we were fifty or whatever, we just can't quite integrate it. As well as, yeah, as well as they can. That's the wild. That's the wild <laughs> thought that someone might might have Neuralink their entire life and not know any different. Like, what what kind of human would that be? Like, would that not? That wouldn't be human anymore. That'd be like full blown <sighs> cyborg. We're talking like some cyberpunk type shit right now. It's already weird when people they don't know how to navigate without their phone. And like, how do、mm. I, how do I get to the grocery store with you know without my <laughs> <laughs> without my map? Like, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you should be able to kind of navigate your own city, right? But a lot of people don't even know. No, they just、are. rely on GPS. <laughs> yeah, man, they rely on their Google Maps or whatever, or their Uber app or whatever. Yeah, it's wild actually thinking about it. I wonder what are we going to be moving towards, like the movie, like Idiocracy, you know, where everyone's just like so inept on an individual level, just relying solely on technology and having no actual intellect. 
it feels like it's coming guys more conversations like this in our podcast by the way if you guys want to check it out um we often talk about starcraft but we delve into many different topics and that's available on both of our channels uh shun's channel by the Doom way link pod. in yeah in the description doom drop pod is what we call it um and uh, we'd be happy to have you guys come and check it out so until next time it's been a blast. Oh, I wanted to say, by the way, uh, I'm so mm. impressed with the beast who's played uh, today. He, he oh, just yeah. killed it. He absolutely uh, he killed he it. Absolutely. He murdered it. He was wearing players for shoes. It was really impressive. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he tied the laces up tight on uh, Queen uh, for Minstrel. Dude, I'm still so frustrated with that map. <laughs> um, it's happened to Queen a lot on that map too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very rough to to move army around that map with the pathing issues that come from uh, those kind of weird lanes, the Beyblade style lanes. Um, I actually did a huge stream yesterday, by the way, Shun. I don't uh, hmm. know if you noticed, but I was streaming for like nine hours or something like that, and oh, I damn. did a huge amount of practice with um, like I was studying a bunch of games, and then I. Uh, studied the build uh, for Hatch Hydra. I think you've been talking to me about that for a long time. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Encouraging me to learn that, and I finally like buckled down and learned the the build, and uh, you know put it together, and then spent uh, many hours like practicing it on ladder and kind of dialed it in a little bit. So I had a nice. very big day of StarCraft yesterday, and a very big day of StarCraft here Starcraft today here as today. well, guys. Thank you so much. For joining us it's been an absolute pleasure Shun, any last words no just thanks guys for tuning in always a pleasure to bring you the games especially when they're as good as this it's, kcm is off the chain especially recently please tune in every week because i can't wait for it honestly yeah hopefully we won't have any more delays last week uh, if you guys didn't hear me at the beginning uh, of the cast there was like uh holiday in korea was the reason why we didn't have kcm last week hopefully we'll have the week five next week i didn't see any additional yeah. uh, big holidays coming up in september so we'll see you guys next week week number five see you there thanks guys